that. All right, we're gonna play the bumper and we'll get started. Hello everybody and welcome! It is day five of the HFC Sony Fun. I am Ooh. Volcomar, joined by my lovely assistants Entom64 and Hello. ex Gamer Richie. Hey ya. Uh. How are you both doing today? Hopefully you are doing pretty good in this fine Is it Monday or Tuesday? I forget. It is <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday mate. All the days have kind of bled together just because I've been <laughs> just consumed entirely by video games. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, uh, there was a bit of a bid war for uh, this uh, game we're playing, Resident Evil 2. It was for whether we play through Claire's campaign or Leon's campaign. And uh, it got pretty fierce to the very last second where Leon was sniped by a six-star donation. So we're going to be playing through Leon's scenario. <laughs> yep, somebody <laughs> thought his boy might need help, so they came with an extra six dollars, because apparently when you're doing a snipe, you may want to leave a little bit more than a penny just to make sure you uh, hit the mark. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. We're going to play a sum, and I'm going to let the game do this one for me. Three, two, one. That is just downright iconic, that. Resident Evil 2. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, that's right. I have a few announcements to make, don't yeah, I? Yeah, you do, Tom. Mm. Yes, as you do. So, uh, you play the game. I'll say my name. That's not right. That's not right at all. But, uh, <laughs> yes, here we go. A few announcements. Announcement number one. We've had a, a bit of a talk behind the scenes, and uh, we've decided a thousand dollars for each new bonus game is a bit much for a group of our size. It's, um, it's a bit intimidating to you all. So, effective immediately, we are slashing that like total mark in half. You now only need to pass every $500 to get a new bonus game. And you know what, since we like you so much, we are going to backdate it. Since we passed $1,000, you unlocked Vib Ribbon. And since we passed $1,500, you also get Simpsons Wrestling. And, Ooh. and both of those games will be played by yours truly, so uh, that should be very exciting, considering we did hit and run earlier. Getting in with some of the wrestling as well, in the Simpsons mm -hmm. side of things, should be pretty exciting. Indeed, and uh, obviously that means once we pass 2,000, you'll get a new one, 2,500, another one, and um, my last announcement <clears throat> comes courtesy of a good friend of mine called Phantom of the Night on Twitter, who has given me an American code for the PS4 version of Sonic Mania, and we're going to be raffling that off. So, let's say, for every $5 donation, you can enter yourself into the raffle, and on the last day of the Sony Fond, we will pick a name at random, and that person will get the code. Keep in mind, American, so it will only work on NTSC PS4s, and, uh, yeah, when you're donating, just leave a comment saying, I want that there Sonic Mania code. And um, whatever you donate, it can be $5, but it can be above it. You can also go to any incentive you like. Uh, we're still taking name in incentive donations for uh, FF7 characters, stuff for uh, Mega Man X5, and uh, who knows, maybe even beyond. So get those donations coming in, guys. We've got a lot of stuff ready for you. What could have done this? Some pretty good stuff that. there. There we go. Well done, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Now, I'm hoping you actually put in the right disc to begin with, but we'll find out soon enough after this cutscene, I suppose. <laughs> uh, the thing is, Resident Evil 2, it comes on two separate discs, and the first disc, you start off as Leon, and then playing through the game as Leon unlocks the second scenario for Claire. And on the second disc, you have the first scenario for Claire, which then unlocks the second scenario for Leon. Ah. Uh. So, I don't know why they did that, I suppose it's just a bit too much game to have on just a singular disc. For the same, sim a similar situation as with Gran Turismo 2. No, shoot her! Oh, <laughs> apparently, since PS PS4 is region free, you can make a US PSN account and it will work. So uh, keep that in mind if you're donating towards it. 
God, these uh, these graphics are great. CGI has never looked better. <laughs> well, it's better well, than the intro cutscene in Battle Arena Toshinden. <laughs> as much as I love that game, it does look rough. And also, considering the age of this thing, this is actually relatively impressive. Because, like, you look back at that, like, early to mid PS1 days, and you're just like, oh my god, this is horrendous. This is sort of, this is passable, I feel. Chris! <laughs> Wait, wrong game. <laughs> West and also, I mean, the game was directed by Hideki Kamiya, so of course it's like the best thing ever. So it's going back, always got to go back to Kamiya somehow, doesn't it? That it does. Of course it does. So, uh, Richie, what's your history with, um, with Resident Evil? I have no history with Resident Evil. I have never played it. I don't necessarily have any intention to play it because, yeah, I, just, I don't really do shooters and I don't really do horror games either. I've developed, gone, I've developed into a bit more of a horror film nerd than I thought I would, but horror games, nah. Um, so, yeah, I'm basically going into this going, I have no idea what I'm talking about, but um, I love me some Hideki Kamiya games and also uh, I'm just excited to experience something totally new. So, it is all good. That's fair enough. Also, I just noticed that in that, in, whilst they were in the police car, the dude had the exact same haircut as Leon. She was like, Leon, I am your brother! Let me feast on your flesh! It's totally fair. He's a zombie, that's what he wants. He, he wants, a bit of, wants a bit of meat, doesn't he? Like, come on, be a bro, be a pal. Just let me nibble on your ear or something. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, super spoopy time. We are now in the game on an official basis. We are Leon, so I did have the right disc on. Ah, damn Zombo, get away from me. Ah, damn Zombo, get away from me. You now, can donate multiple times, by the way, to increase your chances in the Sonic Mania raffle, so don't be shy. Get them, get them in, get them hot. Get them whilst they are fresh, not unlike these zombies over here. It looks like they've been around for a while. <laughs> Flawless segue, though. <laughs> I like taking care of these two zombies specifically, because they do tend to get away. But, uh... Generally speaking, you want to try and conserve as much of your ammo as you can, especially here, since you're not necessarily going to be coming back here again. I'd like to fucking call it Sonic Mania on Twitter again. God, I typo all the fucking time. Oh dear, Tom. I'm typing fast. I'm trying to. What are you doing here? It's it's fine. I know the feeling. Like you're just going. I need to get this thing out, and then just the typos. Just they just flow. And it's just a bit of a disaster sometimes, but it's, it's all good. <laughs> oh, you know what's not a disaster, though? My health right now. I had a good night's sleep. I'm back. I'm usually at my best at this point in the day anyway. I'm just about losing energy when uh, we start doing uh, comms and such at 7, Richie. So uh, I'm amazed a lot of our commentators turned out as well as they did. Okami especially. Well, that's because Okami is like one of the best games ever. And like you can't just you, you can't do a bad job with it. I mean you can, but like you've got me there, so it was gonna be fine whatever happened. I love this dude. He's like, I've got a close eye on things here. <laughs> In that exact accent as well. So Bob, what about your history with uh, Resi 2, mate? When did you first play it? I have a decent amount of experience with the first few games, so namely one, two, and three nemesis. Yeah. Ah, oh, son of a bitch! I was hoping I could uh, <laughs> grab the shotgun. There we go. It's cool. I got it. Run! Now, what you can do is you can kill all the zombies there, but since we are low on the old ammo, we don't necessarily want to do that. So just sort of trying to barge your way past and grab it that way is usually, I say usually in big quotation marks, the best way to go. Ah. So, Volk, I've got a lovely question here for you in the chat from uh, SilverDude5000, um, asking, how are you feeling about the Resi 2 remake? Um, he imagines that you'd be more hyped if they showed some gameplay of it. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. But <laughs> as long as it's a thing that's still going, that's absolutely fine. 
So is there anything with it that you're most excited to see? Or are you just hoping that they just don't screw it up? I was hoping they make it eventually, <laughs> more than anything. That is totally fair. <laughs> I got a little summary of the announcements for late comers. Yeah, this is true. And Tom, there's a little question for you from Jet Kronos. Oh, well, yeah. It's less, it's less a question. It's more asking the people in the chat. Yes. Um, but he, so Jet Kronos says that um, wants the gang to commentate on the Hyperdimension game since they're on uh, the Hellfire Playthroughs channel. Is that ever going to happen? Probably not. It's too <laughs> weave. It's too <laughs> weave. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, I, I, I do agree with you on that. It, it's like, I'm quite willing to go to a level of weeb that that goes above and beyond my weeb levels so that, that one's gonna have to stay off of mine but um i'm sure flame will happily do it solo ah quit munching on me damn man you're not aiming to dive in the first half hour are you i may just at this rate <laughs> oh come on <laughs> I took way too many uh, nibbles along the way, which is a tad unfortunate, but hopefully we'll be fine, question mark. <laughs> question mark. Well, that just makes it more fun. Yeah, exactly. And also, it's live. Like, you can't help these things. <laughs> yeah, no pressure or anything, jeez. <laughs> oh, the gaming break just gave us a shout out. Well, Aww. Hey, good on him. Just watching Leon limp around, just uh, it, it puts things into perspective when you see how based he would become Resi 4. Oh yeah, the dude is just like an absolute champion. Mm -hmm. Well, he's super corny, but we love him for that. Oh yeah, that's like his whole appeal. My god, you're like dead on your feet from what I'm seeing on screen right oh, now. No, 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 come on, come on, come on. I didn't expect him to get back you up again. Say, <laughs> you have to say, it, it is quite hilarious um, watching the footage and hearing your reaction just before it, because I'm just like, oh god, something's coming, and then it happens, and it's like, ah, you see. Like, it's it's always okay when you're watching the streams, because you, you don't necessarily have the weirdness oh, of it. But... Oh, damn it. You know what? Jerry I'm going to put it on easy, because I don't feel that confident on normal. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I would be okay, but apparently not. <laughs> oh, Vol, Volky, 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 please! I'm don't so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, you died. I yes. did indeed. All right, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna do it the safe way. I thought I could be, I thought I could be edgy, but apparently not. Oh. Dear, oh dear, oh dear, just, just, Sony-thon over, let's just go home. <laughs> That's it, the whole thing's cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not playing the bumper again, it's fine. Nah, I'm, I'm gonna, t I'm gonna take my, uh, I'm gonna take my punches on that one. I just completely failed. No, in fact, I think Claire, to be honest, I think Claire would be even worse. She's actually way harder. Oh gosh. Yeah, because, um, well, for one thing, uh, just to give you a bit of trivia, mm -hmm. is a uh, handgun has a lot less ammo in it. Oh. Um, whereas uh, Leon has a clip size of 18, Claire only has a clip size of 13. And furthermore, in general, Claire's weapons are, I would say for the most part, weaker, because it's not entirely all wrong just because she has access to the grenade launcher which is absolutely incredible for a weapon it may be one of the stronger weapons in the game although thinking about it maybe the magnum slightly better mm -hmm. oh jet crodo says tom i just bought the phoenix right trilogy for 3ds any tips for a newcomer i'm gonna actually throw that one over to richie because oh. you've actually done some phoenix right playthroughs so uh, any advice for jet chronos um, well, I mean, obviously, I, I've actually done the entire first trilogy, which was, like, I'm so glad I've actually finished that now, because that's mm -hmm. just like, oh my god. Um, I'd say 
your best bet is expect the unexpected. Um, if you do start to struggle, just get a guide because it's a visual novel. So you don't necessarily lose a ridiculous amount by having a bit of help there to hand. Um, but also with the way the game's logic works, you've just got to make sure that you kind of press everything that you possibly can and then go in to try to throw out the evidence because sometimes you just end up with knowing what the solution to the case is but you don't necessarily figure out the route through to that end point so you just got to have a bit of fun trying to figure that out <laughs> yeah, man, let me get the shotgun thank you I'll just be taking this, and I'll be on my way. Uh, enjoy your meal, I suppose. <laughs> Alright, Goldstorm07 in the chat says, Tom, have you found your job, my words, not his, on that uh, derisive tone there, your job of doing commentary has had an overall effect on your preferred length for games? More so in terms of the general length, not 100% 100% completion. Um, not really. Um... When it comes to recording, I prefer medium length games. I only did a call me because Richie wants to shut up about the damn thing, and uh, <laughs> I had a really fun time in the end, so thank you for continually badgering me on that. Uh, I'm glad we did it in the end. Good, I've, I've, got a, I've got a list of other games that I want to cover that you have resolutely said no to, so <sighs> we'll work our way Fuck. through, don't you worry. Okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> there we go, that should do the trick for those guys. Don't need to worry about that guy. I wonder how well zombies can play basketball. You know what? It's not important right now. <laughs> well, you say that, um, Lollipop Chainsaw, there is actually zombie baseball, basketball in that. There's also zombie baseball. Um, but yeah, they, I don't think they play too well, but they do a very good job of blocking shots of fellow zombies' heads. Um, can be quite annoying, actually. I think what they need to do to improve their chances at like the next NBA league is maybe take a bite out of Charles Barkley or LeBron James. <laughs> that would that, I think that would really boost their uh, overall power. <laughs> what do you like? I think I think so. All Dark right. Souls when? Um, I don't know. Never. Maybe? Question mark. <laughs> That's a very high pitched question mark. Oh yes. Very high pitched question mark. Um, well, I can tell you now, I will not be behind Dark Souls. So um, that's not one of the games I'm chasing down. So you're not getting that from me. Um, whether it's something I'll do on a live stream at some point, I don't know. But uh, Demon Souls was something that came up at one point as far as the Sony phone goes. But the only issue is, is that the uh, estimated playtime on that one can be very sporadic, just depending on how you are on the day. And it can be, it, well, it can take anywhere from like several hours, like maybe 10 or so, to maybe upwards 20 just because you're dying at that one specific spot. Yeah. yeah. It's just one of those games that I think maybe the difficulty is a bit too high for something like a Sony phone. Maybe a more casual affair that you can maybe split into several sessions on a proper live stream is a little bit better, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, but then you, you seem to forget that Crash Bandicoot is the new Dark Souls, and we managed to do Crash 3, so clearly we are totally capable of doing a Dark Souls-esque game, apparently. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was Stefan from FTCR. He's not part of HFC. Yeah, we don't have... Yeah, that's not our responsibility now. That's him. <laughs> that's all on him. So, so basically what I'm saying is FTCR needs to play fucking Bloodborne. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much what we're saying. So, uh, here's a bit of a question for you all, and uh, the chat, feel free to participate in this one as well, if you so desire. Uh, but, as we all well know, zombies have been around in the likes of fiction for quite a number of years now, and as such, yes. we've seen a variety of different zombos. Um, uh -huh. What is your favourite type of zombie, or rather, what zombies portrayed in media do you like the most? Hmm. I think I have an answer, but do you want to go first, Rich? Um, uh, I'd rather you go first, to be fair, because I'm sat here just going... Types of zombies? I, I don't really look at them like that. I, I mostly just think about... Well, just think about as what zombie from zombies what media. Um, I mean, my, like, my favourite zombie media is definitely Shaun of the Dead. 
Oh yeah. Because that's amazing. How's that for a slice of fried gold? But uh, I prefer the classic shuffling zombies. I have had many a nightmare where it's just me and a single zombie in like this old style house in the middle of a cornfield and there's like no one else. And I've just tried to get outside of the house while not getting bitten, but I seem to like can never find the, the door and whatnot. And uh, the zombie, it never stops. And it always manages to get past barricades somehow. It looks like that's fair. Well, that, that, that's because it's a dream zombie, so it, it's out to kill you. Jesus, I'm glad that didn't turn up in Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. <laughs> <laughs> New for Walking Dead, exclusive to Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> the levitating dead. Oh no, they're coming up the stairs. Say not a zombie. How could this be? <laughs> oh, that that's a bit insensitive, given that his voice actor died not long ago. Ah, uh, yes, that is truly a shame. He was one of the greats, that's for damn sure. No offense to uh, Corey Burton, but I hope he doesn't replace Leonard Nimoy. Well, well, we'll see who does, but I mean, to be fair, we do have another Xehanort whose voice actor is still alive, so that's all okay. Mm. Uh, as for my favourite zombie, I do have to give a particular mention to the ones that feature in Plants vs. Zombies, because for one, oh, they yes. sing. For two, they're smart enough to, like, arm themselves with traffic cones, ladders, and all sorts of other nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. for three, it's just that right kind of goofy humour. So I kind of yeah. like how the zombies were portrayed in uh, Plants vs. Zombies in particular. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. There are zombies on your lawn. And so on and so forth. Alright. Well, pretty soon, we will be coming up towards possibly one of the best scenes in video game history. Oh. Mm, does that have something to do with stars? No, that's Resident Evil 3. Fuck. Does it beat... I was meant to be the one to fill your dark soul with light! No, not quite, but... The acting is probably just as questionable, considering the situation. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Um, you were nearly a Jill sandwich? Oh no, wait, that's the first one, isn't it? Yeah. Although that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of just become a meme at this point, so it kind of transcended its crap factor and became something special. Yeah. Along with, I am the master of unpicking, or unlocking, or... Lockpicking. Lockpicking, that, whatever it was. <laughs> when I find a typewriter. I shall save on it. <laughs> I am Resident Evil, yes! <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> how that quote goes, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love Legendary Frog. Alright, uh, so we pick up the police thingamajig here that tells us that the passcode for the safe is 2236. And that will give us some goodies. So uh, what we're going to do is we are going to deposit the increment for now, and we'll take a couple of first aid sprays just to be on the safe side. Oh, I think there's a zombie ice cream van going around my neighborhood right now. There's a zombie <laughs> ice cream van. <laughs> it's selling really soft serve God. from your brain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a little bit of a foreboding moment there with the liquor in the window. How much is that liquor in the window? <laughs> you're, you're in a very sing-songy mood today. How much do people have to donate to get to you, get you to stop? <laughs> One million dollars. Okay. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. Let's just go with that. Yeah. <laughs> if you can reach yeah. our goal, I will stop singing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Same right. here. And also, if anybody wants me to actually have a bit of a proper sing-song with anything, then you. Just donate for it, and I'll see what I can do. Alright, let's see if we can think of anything wrong with this reaction. Well, you realise we're on a delay, right? Yes. But you'll see it in a second. <gasps> uh oh. Okay, oh, then. boy! <laughs> <laughs> what kind of reaction to a fucking liquor is that? <laughs> yeah, is there something you're not telling us? Oh boy, this is just like in my Japanese anime! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
All right, we got ourselves some more green herbs. Now, herbs are, apart from first aid kits, one of your means of healing. And you can combine various colored herbs with each other to create new concoctions, which will vastly increase healing power and all that jazz. Hmm. All right. Hmm. So I'm actually going to backtrack now that we've uh, killed the liquor because I kind of want to go into that safe. God, we're already going with the backtracking. Bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just the way that I've gotten used to doing it. It's handy just to get the extra shotgun shells and such whilst you're there and use the shotgun that you have currently to clear that room. <laughs> uh, Shimadon77, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, says, I'll do donate to have Volk sing various songs. Okay, uh, $15 a pop. Alright. Although if there's some I don't know, I'll have to look up the lyrics and uh, make sure I make good on that one at some point later down the line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Volk is Resident Evil 2, your favourite, says so Silver Dude 5000. Um, I would say yeah, it's one of my favourites. I just like the hamminess of it, and it's not overly difficult either. Well, obviously when I have it on easy it's not, but uh... Alright, again, nice and close, there's plenty of shotgun here for everyone. And uh, just one more. Although I do have to admit, I was a bit of a fan of uh, Nemesis as well, that was pretty damn good also. Alright, I'll finish these dudes off with the handgun. Also, oh wow, X Max. Um, I guess you could say Volk will be singing old Volk songs. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I'm not laughing, That's but I get it. That's what you get, X Max. That's what you joke get. is that Volk sounds a little bit like Volk. So there you go. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh. Alright, I just need to uh, make one of these zombies fall down just to give me an avenue in which to run away ever so slightly so I can take out the other dudes. There's a lot of uh, positioning that you have to do in this game, especially when it comes to the bosses. You tend mm -hmm. to do a lot of gunning and running. Alright, now this guy here, he ain't fooling anybody. Especially not me. And I'm pretty easy mm -hmm. to fool. <laughs> well, uh, that's how I got you to do smart PC in the first place. <laughs> Alright. Um, oh yes, Volk, we've got another question for you. So, this is from Goldmember PV. Um, so, if you wanted to, could you have just stood completely still and just sneaked around the liquor? Or do you have to fight that first liquor? I believe you can actually run past it, but I, you do come around that corridor a few times, so I prefer taking it out now as opposed to just later on or avoiding it altogether. That's totally fair. So I believe and... the code was 2236. Yes, it was. And lo and behold, and... we have some shotgun shells. Oh, brilliant. And whilst you're getting those, um, we've got another question from Jet Kronos. Um, so, will you be playing any Digimon games for the main commentary channel, Bulk? Um, that's a bit of a tough one, actually, because obviously I play through uh, Cyber Sleuth and Next Order on the live stream, but it's a matter of if an RPG like Cyber Sleuth would be suitable, because if so, then maybe Cyber Sleuth 2 could be something we look into, but RPGs are always a bit finicky for the sake of keeping it as a concise commentary. But if you can oh, achieve yeah. it, you can get some really, really good stuff out of it. Mm -hmm. But I always livestream some of the newer Digimon games especially. I'm very much looking forward to Cyber Sleuth 2, so... Even if we don't do it as a commentary, I will almost certainly be doing it as a livestream. When yeah. it comes out. I wanted to, uh, at least on, say, Fridays, maybe get in the call with Volk when he's streaming. Just so I can hang out with you all again, you know. Brief you on how HFC's doing, what's coming up. So, like, for those of you who don't have Twitter and so on, can, you know, just interact with me a little bit and so on. Yeah, and it's nice. It would be nice to have somebody to uh, talk to because it does get pretty lonely sometimes on the Aww. old live stream. You do have those slow moments which just make it nice for you can have some comfortable silence whilst you're playing, but sometimes it's just like somebody to chat with. Mm -hmm. And the more people you have, the more talking points that can occur and the more bants that can be had. Indeed. Yeah. 
a Tales of game might be a wee bit too long, and uh, I've only played about an hour of Tales of the Abyss 3DS, so uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, for live streaming, I did actually, well, when I say somewhat recently, streamed Tales of Berseria. Oh, yes. That was a very fun game, but um, I may revisit some of the older Tales game. I know that I would, wouldn't mind going through Grace's F again, because that uh -huh. was pretty fun. But uh, we'll have to see. There's like a whole bunch of games I want to get through. So it'll be one of those where once I've gone through that list, I can think about why I wouldn't mind replaying. And Grace's F would probably be nearest the top of that list. <laughs> oh my gosh. This dude, you may know him on uh, Twitter, uh, called Nibelin. He just posted a picture saying, My favorite photo of the eclipse. And it's Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite being blocked by Dragon Ball Fighter Z. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brutal. Oh, that is glorious. I like it. I, I, I need to see this image. Yes, yes, that that is perfect. I'm not even gonna play Dragon Balls Fighters F Z whatever because I'm not that into Dragon Ball, but th that's beautiful. <laughs> well, I have to say, the newest Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite trailer does leave me a little bit more hopeful about that game. But the hype of Dragon Ball Fighter Z will not be quenched, since, especially since oh. we got that latest trailer. Post the image in the chat. You got it. I'll I'll link to his uh his Twitter. I don't want to view steal right now. <laughs> and the better news is, is that Dragon Ball Fighters is actually coming around about the time of my birthday as well. So Ooh. Uh, hey, that'll be a nice birthday gift to have. Oh, definitely. I can think of worse things. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was already hyped for Dragon Ball Fighter Z already, just because it looks so well made. But the fact that it's going to have what seemed to be a sort of story mode and there's Dragon Ball Super content in there as well, that's got me doubly hyped. Yeah, from those things, it's definitely a story mode. So that is that is definitely good. And also, Suit, we've got another question for you. Suit, we've got a question for you. No, Volk, we've got a question for you from Suit. Um, so you're running Parappa Rapper later, um, do you find it okay with the delay on a HD monitor? Because apparently you do have to press the buttons like weirdly early on it. Uh, I don't find it that difficult, but the chicken's always going to be tough, so if you want to see some chicken rage, definitely tune into that, <laughs> is all I well, can say. Volk, Volk, you've just got to suck it off and beat that chicken. Beat it good. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if I want to uh, beat the chicken quite that furiously. <laughs> Damn, he didn't take the bait, fuck. I love his zombie just standing around the corner like he's some kind of Metal Gear Solid wannabe. <laughs> just no, like... it's a Soulsborn enemy. Oh, son of a bitch, he did actually get me, but you know what? I'm gonna stamp on his head, it'll be fine. And uh, we'll use one of the first aid sprays just to get us back up to full health. Uh, do we have oh, enough that... room for those herbs? Uh, yes, we do, in actual fact. I'm gonna pick that up. That did not look like he was biting your leg. It was a bit further off, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's the new uh, crotch burgling zombies. Christ. Just remember to flip the bird on that level. Oh, birds will be flipped. <laughs> Believe you me. <laughs> By the time we are done with that. <laughs> Actually, there's a funny story I could uh, probably discuss on that one. When I was practicing for the uh, game on the Sony phone, and I was trying it with the P PS4 version specifically, mm -hmm. uh, the chicken was obviously giving me a huge amount of trouble. Like, you have no idea how much trouble that damn chicken caused me. And after about an hour or so, I finally figured out, like, a means in which I can occasionally beat it. It's not a consistent method, to say the least, but it's at least a method. And I got to the stage five and stage six, did them both first time. So it was li it's literally just the chicken level that causes me all that grief. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll have to see how well I do when it actually comes to doing it live, so. <laughs> Am I on for that, co-commentary was? I'm not entirely sure. I know that it's on after Ratchet and Clank. But that'll be at like 11 p.m. British Standard Time, I believe. Yes, yes, Tommy, you are along with Mia, apparently. Nice, nice. That's only about an hour long estimate, so uh, yes. it's all good. Hour long plus chicken time. No, I'm hoping it'll be an hour long with the chicken <laughs> included. I gave I'm, myself I'm a sure good amount of time be. just in case. We have faith in you, Volk. And uh, speaking of faith, 
which isn't really the best segue in the world. Um, Axel's got a question for you, which will um, determine your friendship. What are your thoughts on the Resident Evil 1 remake? The Resident oh. Evil 1 remake. Uh, I have to admit, I don't have the most experience with that game, but from what I remember of it, I mean, obviously the graphics were pretty decent. And they did keep a lot of the things from the original intact. But there were some crazy moments in that game. Like, I remember there was a particular moment with the rocket launcher that just absolutely blew my mind. Ah, hold on a minute. Hmm. But apart I from did that... Actually, I did actually... No, no, it's me talking now. Me, I'm the important one. Shush. We good? Yep, we're good. Don't worry. Thank you. Sorry, that's meant to be funny, by the way. I'm not being serious. Uh, I actually was gifted uh, Resi Remake when I was like 15 or so. Uh, when I was uh, at college redoing my GCSEs, this lovely bloke actually gave me a copy of it because we were classmates and whatnot. And uh, never completed it because I think uh, like Crimson Head started coming out and uh, that scared me. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, who knows? Maybe... Maybe we'll see it on uh, HFC someday. Mm. And uh, we have a one dollar donation. Here's a buckaroo. Please point towards naming Barrett Booker T, as in the five time, five time, five time, five time, five time WCW World Heavyweight Champion Booker T. Can you dig it, sucker? Right. Adding right now. So that's one dollar we do. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, to say the five time, five time thing, I am just reminded of a part of the Yo video game school going, 21! I won! Suck my dick! <laughs> that was the greatest thing ever. <laughs> Alright, I believe we have pushed the thing into the thing. I'm just gonna. Oh, and just before we get off uh, the Resi 1 remake, I, I swear to God, I'm not like false flagging here or anything. I'm not trying to bait you into watching a bad playthrough. I really enjoyed the Game Grumps playthrough of a Resi remake because Aaron actually knew what he was doing. Oh boy, that does not happen very often these days. <laughs> Richard, do you even watch Game Grumps? No. Well, trust then, because you don't know what you're talking about. No, I don't. I've don't been really there. Care. I've been in the trenches. <laughs> I know the good from the bad. I know the X from the uh, the weed stories. I've seen it all. You don't know. I'll do me uh, incentive spiel in another 15 minutes. I just want to pace it out a little bit. That is fairy snuff. Alright, we're gonna uh, go ahead and take this next red jewel and deposit it in the safety box because we don't need it just yet. There are a lot of uh, key items in this game that you will need later, so... As you're playing through, and especially when you're trying to go for the fast completions to unlock the extra stuff, you will tend to get into the habit of uh, storing away such items and bringing them out when they are absolutely needed. Mm. Just so you can stock as much ammo, healing and such as you can, just in case you get nibbled on along the way. That's the point. What are some uh, Game Grumps playthroughs, and this is to people in the chat, that you actually really enjoyed? And uh, as a bonus, which one can you literally not sit through? Like, what's the worst one? So, best and worst. I mean, I have a whole list of the ones I like. W what really bugs me is that Steam Train basically doesn't exist, and there's been no Ross and Danny stuff in well over a year. I want some more point and click adventure games! Yeah, it does seem like something that has suffered a bit of a loss recently. I would have liked for him to try stuff like Broken Sword eventually, because I remember that series being particularly awesome. Mm-hmm. I'd sell for Monkey Island, personally. Oof. Still gotta do Monkey Island 3 at some point. Did they do Day of the Tentacle? Yes, I'm do. pretty sure they did Day of the Tentacle at one point. They they did, but I don't think that was um, Steam Train. It may have been Grumpcade. Ah, so it wasn't a full thing, then. Hmm. I don't know whether they finished it or not. I didn't watch it at the time. Fairy snuff. Right now, I'm just watching uh, one of our runners, Tanner, uh, who will be playing Little Big Planet 2 after we're done with Resident Evil 2, uh, fail his way through Oil Ocean Zone in Sonic Mania. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you'll be a put on blast. After he called me his good friend, then Tom 64, mm. like, part three. I'm sorry. And it's just at that point, you're oh, great, now I just feel bad. Here I am, trying to make a joke. <laughs> there we go. 
There is actually a tell of if you actually killed a zombie or not, and that is when they fall over, there will be an actual pool of blood. That's how you know they're dead for real, even if they are twitching. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so we are now in the stars offices. Wesker's deck... Desk? Deck? What? Wesker's gonna be a Yu-Gi-Oh player, apparently. <laughs> it's time well... to go, Chris. Chris! Oh, uh, dearie me. Uh, which one's Wesker's desk again? Because there's actually a Easter egg you can pull off here. So if you find Wesker's desk and click on it like 50 times, and then develop a film, you'll actually get a picture of Rebecca if you develop it. Oh, Rebecca uh -huh. Yep, the very same. We'll go ahead and well, take on, guys. Donate the away and we'll sit here uh, forever. The, the uh, Grumps playing the Disney Princess game was amazing. Okay, hey, just me that, I guess. <laughs> ah, there's Chris's desk. Ah, uh, Chris, the man who punches boulders. Yeah, yes, yes he does. And this is how he talked about how he uh, took a trip abroad to sort something out. And uh, there we go, we're getting the unicorn medal, and we get a scene with Claire. Leon! Leon! <laughs> it's good to see you're still among the living. It looks like we're not going to find your brother here after all. <sighs> so how are you two doing? Richie, are you doing okay, mate? No reason for yeah, I'm fine. I'm just sort of hodling along, really, on my nice week off um, to focus on this right. as best I can. And I'm just sort of... Recording Eternal Sonata and reading and doing all sorts in the meantime. That way we can keep good, good. Everyone in, uh, behind the scenes has been doing excellently so far. Like you, Spar and Nat, we've got Flame and Mir on point, Snake's been doing great even if uh, <laughs> Metal Gear did toss him around and make him his bitch for a while, but uh, I think he's going to kick ass <laughs> in Mega Man X5. And uh, let me just look through. We've got Loophole coming up. Uh, obviously, Stefan killed it in Crash 3. He's going to be playing uh, the first PS3 Ratchet Tools of Destruction in a day or two, I believe. And uh, just basically everyone involved in HFC. Yes, and Axel, you're doing brilliantly. All right, yes. Pat, Pat. That was on your head. <laughs> yes, we are rewarded and paid entirely in head pats here in HFC. We are all part cat, really, and we accept this payment... With great diligence. Jeez. I think this may be my tenth time listening to the Sonic Mania soundtrack on loop. Damn. <laughs> that just makes just me look good, forward man. to playing it myself. I haven't really listened to the soundtrack either, just in case it contains something spoilery as well. Oh, it does, but uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go in completely blind on that one. Right. That's a, definitely a good plan. Um, I just want to clear some of my backlog before I start getting some new games again, because it just feels too tremendously big. Yeah. I mean... Uh... And yeah, I still want to play like Splatoon 2 and Mario plus Rabbit Kingdom Battle and everything. Yeah. And there's just not oh, yeah. enough time in the day. I got Final Fantasy 15, like, I think it was for my last birthday. Yeah. And this was in... Uh... 2016, and I haven't opened it yet. It's in, in its wrapping. Unlike uh, Xenoblade <laughs> Chronicles X, I actually want to play it. So, there you go. Yeah. They actually yeah, announced the PC version for that recently. <laughs> yes, they did. Yeah. yeah, with like 4K textures and whatnot, and uh, it's a 170 gig download, so have fun with it. Oh! Oh, that's a big... I have to say, Final Fantasy XV has its problems. Definitely, but it, it's a very fun game that you can just sort of pour hours and hours into. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, freaking amazing music. They announced something that's like a, a demake of it. It reminds me of the uh, DS version of Final Fantasy IV, and that comes in like 10 episodes or so. And there's been rumblings of something F15 related coming to the Switch. So uh, who knows? Maybe it will get it. 
Yeah, they're yeah, already going ham really. on FF15 in general. Well, to be fair, considering it's um, blooming length of development and the hell that it went through, they kind of need to get that return on investment, so they're just sort of pushing it out to as many places as possible, because to be fair, that's the only way they're ever going to recoup those costs. Yeah, I guess so. That's probably why they're just releasing so much stuff to do with it, just to try and recoup as much as they can from, mm, I guess, yeah. its own individual franchise as opposed to the Final Fantasy franchise in general. Yeah. But I'm hoping the PC version kind of comes, like, bundled with everything, as opposed to, you know, having the DLC separately as well. That would just be a little bit cheap, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we are dealing with the um, lovely AAA video game industry, which loves to just take its um, everything in a game and just kind of parcel it up and go, here you go, here's a season pass, here's a bit of DLC. Yeah, although here's usually when it comes to PC ports, yeah, usually when it comes to PC ports, they have been reasonably good. Yeah, definitely. I'm just hoping they don't decide to choose now of all days to break the trend. Um, apparently, according to Gold Member PB, it does. It has all the DLC, so that is good. Yeah. Good on you, Square Enix. Download better if they're releasing on another platform. Oh, definitely. I mean, they usually do with the uh, AAA developers. When they do do an eventual PC release, it's usually like a definitive edition. Where they sell it at the same price as it was when it first came out, but it does tend to come bundled with all the DLC. Yeah. Oh yes, there is Inca Ribbons there, but we don't have the room for it. Need to clear up some inventory space. Uh, I suppose we could do that now then, since we're on the way there. You do have to do a little bit of backtracking in this game. There's mm -hmm. only maybe one or two occasions where you have to go, like, all the way to the other end of the police department and back. Luckily. But you do have to do a little bit of backtracking here and there to uh, help solve puzzles and all that kind of thing. I suppose that's where a good deal of the length of the game comes from when you're playing this for, for the first time. Just going around yeah, trying yeah. to figure out where everything is. And then, of course, when you play through it again to unlock the cool stuff and you kind of have a decent idea of where you're going and what you need to do. So, I suppose that's something. With Resi 2, obviously there's a sense of linearity in the progression that you can do, but how open is it? Is it very much similar to... Well, I say similar to because I've never really experienced it, um, but like the big house of Resident Evil 1, which seems relatively open, but obviously there's a route through. Is it like that, or is it much more kind of railroading you through the story? Um, I'd say it's a little railroady, but not too extreme. You do have a little bit of wriggle room where you can kind of visit things out of order if you wanted to, but for the most part, there is a degree of linearity because it's kind of split into three sections where you've got the police department, you've then got like the sewer section, and then you've got the uh, umbrella labs themselves that come toward the end. Uh huh. And usually, I think you can go between the sewers and the police department just fine, but getting from the umbrella labs to either of those places is a little bit trickier. Okay. Alright, so now we got the key, we need to open the door further along this corridor. Uh, thankfully with the keys, it does blatantly tell you when you can actually discard things, which is really, really handy. It means you don't have to go nearly as gung-ho on saving keys and uh, effectively doubling or tripling your inventory management. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so it's there, the key uh, is just now. Think of a, what do I think of Dragon Ball Fighters, as I like to call it? Looks amazing, we'll most likely be picking it up. Expect to hate your play through sometime next year. Hey, whoop, zombos, hold on. I got just a thing for you. We may actually end up double dipping that and having like a, a multiplayer version for a spot PC and the single player playthrough uh, as a regular, well, LP. I would definitely love to do some multiplayer stuff. 
That would just be the hypest thing for me personally. Oh my well, god. The torso like is seen. still moving! Oh. Uh. Get down. There we go. Alright, check the broom closet, grab some more bullets, because where else would you store handgun bullets but in the closet with the broom in the bucket? <laughs> well, you know, Chance has got to protect himself. Uh, true that. He was the only also, one that was really prepared for this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, also, have you guys seen Hot Fuzz? Like, they just, like, love oh. shoving ammo everywhere in a police Morning. station. Clearly. Fucking love that film. It's my favourite of the Cornetto trilogy, for sure. Same here. It's glorious. Oh, did they uh, start beta signups for fighters today? Well, Pumpkin 2000. Interesting. I mean, I'm not going to check but for the people who want to, there you go. That is a very well rendered railing right there. Truly it was. Wouldn't have seen it coming at all. But uh, we got one of our, well, the second puzzle here, where we have to organize these bookshelves like in the portrait that we were just looking at earlier. But uh, thankfully for me, I already have an idea of what to do here. I have myself a handy little cheat sheet here to help me out. So I'm just gonna chase, scroll that down just so I know where I am. Because it is very easy to get lost in the game just so... Uh, having something there just to sort of gently nudge you in the right direction is always good to have. Mm -hmm. So it's this shelf here. And this shelf over here, and that will unlock the thing we need, which we won't actually use until much later on. So this is definitely a prime example of one of those items that has a use, but it doesn't become apparent until much later on. Probably like halfway through the game. Oh, blooming heck. Yeah, quite a while away. Yeah, I kind of wish Super Saiyan Blue was... Uh part of Goku and Vegeta's base character and you know he power up like in the Budokai games but alas alas they're going with uh, the more traditional DB fighter kind of roster thing it's okay I think it's pretty varied as is yeah that's true no no uh, Jack Rose get those questions coming mate we're here to entertain you not the other way around infamous Richie I believe you know that series I know of it. I have never played any of it. Um, I, hate, I hate when this happens. I must be confusing you with someone else. You must be like, I know that we we talk a lot, but I, I would have thought by this point you would have um, remembered what I do and do not know. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm a terrible friend, I guess. <laughs> yes, clearly. Um, but yeah, Infamous is that um, superhero based game by Sucker Punch Productions mm -hmm. that I think has the, the morality system in it and sort of I think okay but yeah well it, it's certainly not on uh, my radar so unfortunately it's probably not well I'm certainly not going to be the one playing it if it does ever happen let me shake the magic eight ball and see what's going to happen Seems unlikely. <laughs> that was a can of Pringles. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Eight ball Pringles. Now there's an advertising campaign right there. Mm -hmm. Should I develop uh, this entire can of Pringles in one go? All signs point to yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a certainty I think would be better. Once you pop, you just cannot stop. Uh, let's see, Breath of the Wild, uh, no plans. I haven't actually played the blinking thing yet, and I so want to right now. Oh, for God's sake, Tom, play the damn game. I'm waiting for a Switch. Oh, uh, that's fair enough. Yeah, I'm Thank in the you. same situation, although I'm hoping to pick one up in time for when Xenoblade Chronicles 2 comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, thoughts on the new ARMS character? Uh, she seems cute. That's about it. That's all I have to say. She's like a clown character with a candy emoji. Yes. What's her name? Lola Pop? Something like that, yes. It looks quite fun, actually. Uh, there are actually no Pringles in this. It's just a, a thing I should have taken downstairs a while ago. <laughs> oh, look at that! <laughs> it's uh, it's four o'clock on the dot, so I can do my spiel. Phew! 
Hey all, we are the Hellfire Comms, Sony Fon, and from August 18th to the 31st, we're attempting to raise money for Child's Play. I'll say that again properly, Child's Play, who seek to improve the quality of life for children in hospitals around the world by providing them with video game systems and games. Once, uh, I'll restart that. I'm losing my voice, I don't know why. For every $500 raised, you will unlock a new incentive game. It was originally 1000 but I thought, you know what, that's a bit too much. Uh, we're a small group, we'll make it easier for you all to uh, get new games. So uh, we cut it down to 500 and so far you guys have unlocked Jumping Flash, Vib Ribbon, and The Simpsons Wrestling. Once we reach $2,000, you'll get another one. And the clue for that, if I scroll down, and you can see the incentive on, uh, or, you know, just the schedule and the incentive game clues on hsc-sonyfun.com. Uh, the clue for the fourth game is a streamer's gotta do what a streamer's gotta do. And we're looking for $2,000 overall for that. And also, for $5 donations and up, you can enter yourself into a raffle for an American, an American, rather, PSN code for Sonic Mania. Make sure you have a US account if you are uh, planning to get that. There's no limit on how many entries uh, you can get, so keep donating and make sure you uh, write in the donation comment that you want to be entered for the Sonic Mania raffle. Just $5 can make the world a difference to our cause, so uh, get them in leckety split. And of course, that same donation can go towards incentives like naming characters in Final Fantasy VII, uh, Deadline, when that character appears in Final Fantasy VII, or stuff in Mega Man X5, so there you go. Ooh. And um, when will Mega Man X be? Because I believe it's coming up pretty soon, is it not? Uh, let's have a little look-see here. Uh, that is tomorrow, at the time of this recording. So uh, the deadline is 12am BST, and I guess Thursday the 24th morning? So not much time left, but there's still plenty of opportunities to get your donations in for that one. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, currently we are starting at zero with five dollars. Um, uh, X is at one dollar, so you've got plenty of chance to snipe that if you would like to. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're quite a ways off of the three other Mega Man X Five incentives. So get Black Zero Armor, get Ultimate Armor X, and Awakened Zero Ending. But we're just plugging along through those. So if you want to donate towards those causes. Get in there. Oh, yes. You want to read off some of the FF7 names we've got so far, mate, and how much they have in total each? Of course I can. So, we've got um, Barrett, named THD, is $11. Okay. Um, Kite Sith, named Pingers, at $21. Cloud, named Protag, at $10. Cloud, named Dekeed, or whatever it is, at $304. I think that is by, by and far the winner. Um, we've got Barrett named Helnar for $1. We've got Vincent named Funny for $83. We've got Kitesith named Crims Crimbleson for $5. Eris named Gunnadai for $75. Tifa named Speranda for $34. <laughs> Red 13 named Sunny for $25. Eris named Gonna Live for $20. My name's winning. Get in there. <laughs> um, Red 13 named Crash for $10. Sid named Guy Fieri for ninety dollars. Oh, you mean Cloud named Edgelord for twenty dollars? Oh yeah, there is that one as well. And um, Barrett named Mr. T for ten dollars. Kite Sith named Enton for thirty-four dollars. Yuffie named Waifu for seventeen dollars. Vincent named Alucard for twenty dollars. And then most recently, we had um, Barrett named Booker T for one dollar. Ah, so that's a new one. Yes, you can, in fact, uh, like, snipe a new name entirely, if you want to suggest it. Indeed you can. But you gotta donate, guys. Nothing in life comes for free. And, well, you know, you're helping a good cause here, so you might as well. Exactly. Helping other people out makes you feel fantastic. And now that the guilt hour is done, back to the game. Where we literally <laughs> picked up the handgun parts earlier, and now... We are running away from crows. It's a good plan. The birds are here to kill you, so uh, run. Yep. And uh, 
due to the new incentive game rules, wherein you unlock a new one every 500, we are literally about $404 away from unlocking the fourth bonus game. So uh, let's see if we can't get to that in the next few days, though. I reckon we'll I'm be able sure to do it. I'm sure we can. Now, I believe that, uh, Jet Kronos, you asked me a question about my thoughts on Moana earlier. It is amazing, and I love it. I know I went on and on and on during the Disney thon going, I hope it's good. Yes, it is good. Go watch it. It's amazing. I love it. I can go. It's a damn good one, and it's got me very excited for, like, Gigantic and so on and so forth. I didn't really watch more Disney movies because I am missing out on quite a few. Uh, I think my girlfriend's going to drag me into a Watch Moana on DVD at some point, so hopefully when I'm done with the Sony fun, I'll finally be able to watch that after God knows how long. DVD? Yes. What are you, some kind of savage? It's Blu-ray <laughs> nowadays. Uh, we do DVD or Blu-ray. Definitely go Blu-ray, mate. It's, like, the difference is insane. Like, even now, I am flabbergasted by the difference between DVDs and Blu-rays. It's, it's nuts. Just do a little plug for the uh, Sonic Mania raffle. <laughs> that door scared the bejeebus out of me when I was a kid. You don't necessarily have to open it, but I wanted to show it off. <laughs> just as the zombies just suddenly appear at the door and you're just not used to that happening at all. It's just like, oh my god, there's a zombie! Uh -huh. <laughs> That's because it's a horror game, it's trying to scare you, Volk. And that here's us just talking over it and um, completely slapping away any sort of dramatic tension that you'd be feeling right now if you were playing the actual game. Oh, don't worry oh. about it. There's a couple of modes that even in spite of everything, you probably couldn't cut the tension away from that. I'm bracing myself for it even now, but the chances are I'll still get scared by it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's horror games for you. You've, you've either got the metal or you don't. Yes. Alright, we're gonna uh, use our borrowed prop from Gabe Newell to put out this fire. Uh, how do I feel about 17 and 18 being one character in Fighters Z? I, I was kind of hesitant at first, but since it's kind of like an Ice Climbers sort of character, I think that's better than 17 just appearing in some of 18 supers. Yeah, it gives it a bit more involvement, I suppose, although I do have a bit of bias with my boy 17. So, I'm a little bit sad, but you know what, I'm just glad he's in the game at all, so, you know what, I'm okay with it. Uh, I will pick up Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I'm a little bit sad it's not connected to the first game, but uh, it looks really fun all the same. So, uh, I'm really down for a new world and new characters, etc. Alright, I'm not sure if the crews actually bother you again, but I've never really gave, given them the chance to. It's just not worth the risk. No, it, it's definitely not. And also, I seem to recall hearing that they're actually remaking The Birds, um, Alfred Hitchcock's film. It's just like, wait, what? <sighs> Why? I know, it, it's because like Hollywood has run out of ideas at this point and just wants to remake everything. Um, but yet, like, I've not even watched Alf most of Alfred, Hitch yeah. Alfred Hitchcock's stuff. I mean, I think the only one that I've watched is Vertigo so far, yeah. which is bad. I feel I should watch more, like Psycho. Um, but yeah, it's just like, just, just know, just realise the reason they worked was because they came out at that specific time and were done in that specific way. And the second you try and recreate that, you open yourself up to a whole bunch of criticism if it's not as good as that original one. Yeah, I hear you. Maybe I was cashing in on the success of Birdemic. <laughs> yeah. That did strike me as a possibility. So now we finally get to use those two gems we picked up earlier. And pick ourselves up a couple of new things to play around with. Da, 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 da. Around the other side. Put in the other gem. And now we have a very unnecessary cutscene. 
Like literally a second and it's gone. That is very unnecessary. That's the definition of unnecessary. There's unnecessary yeah. 101, if that's even a thing. Alright, got the key and we've got the uh, plug, so I believe we're all okay now. So we got to deposit the plug since we don't need it right now. That'll come much later. So uh, here's something for the chat to uh, give me a little bit of feedback on if you would be so inclined. Um, your favorite and least favorite Resident Evil moments. And this can spread across the whole franchise, side games, and all. So, don't hold back, let us know your best and worst, and, uh, we'll try and see if we can chime in with some of our thoughts as well, if we can, uh, add some extra input on our side. Well, I mean, unfortunately, uh, as I said, I'm practically useless on this subject. Um, I'm basically here for the... I love Hidekikami, uh, um... Train. That that is my reason for being here, really. <laughs> um, but I'm sure the chat's got some lovely things. I mean, we've got Axel Ryman with favourite RE1 HD remaster. Solid choice. Solid choice. Least favourite being Resident Evil Six. All of it. Dude, stare. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to say my favourite is Resi Four. It's a uh, Wii edition, to be precise. Hmm. One of my top ten favourite games of all time. The Wii version was surprisingly solid. I was floored by how they actually managed to get a lot right with that game and not completely hamstring it with motion controls and bollocks like that. Yeah, very solid. Um, Resident Evil 4 is definitely up there, but I still much prefer Resident Evil 2. It was, it's just a, it was just more relevant to me at the time, and it always stuck out with me as a uh, favorite, even if I wasn't that great at it back in the day, and arguably still am not now. <laughs> mm. Yeah, got some more lovely moments just rolling in. So we've got Gold Member PB, um, his favorite. Well, the best and worst moment in the series is uh, Chris punching a boulder. That is truly the best worst thing. <laughs> I don't think yeah. there's much competition for that specific combination. <laughs> um, Teen Shade 43, favourite is Chris punching the boulder in Resident Evil 5. Least favourite is having a bulk copy of Resident Evil 5 that doesn't have a sell all button. That does sound pretty awful. Yeah, that, that does sound kind of terrible. Like, not having a sell all button these days should be considered sacrilege. Pretty much, yes. Um, we have the lovely Umbryonic65, who has donated loads to us this marathon so far, um, saying least favourite moment is every scene with uh, fucking Steve during Resident Evil Code Veronica. Yeah, that one's pretty rough as well. Then we've got Sean Retro, the best is Resident Evil 2. Well, thank God we're playing it. <laughs> we, um, we chose West wisely. Yes, we did. Um, worst is the movies, not the CG ones. Yeah, the movies are pretty terrible, and yet they insist on making more for some reason. Yeah, I think they have finally finished that franchise now, so that is good. Well, you know, they made money. People, you know, liked watching them for the most part. Then again, so yeah. did Transformers, but that doesn't change the fact it's shit. <laughs> well, you know that's not how it works in the real world, Volk. Money talks. Oh, for God's sake, I thought I took care of you. <laughs> That's the only issue. Sometimes the camera is just so awkward you can't actually see the zombies coming until it's literally too late. Yeah, it, it is pretty. It, it's one of the reasons why I'm not a fan of this style of game. I always like to be able to see things, and when you're kind of consciously blocking off my view, I'm just like, why? Why are you doing this to me? I know in the case of this, it's because it wants to create tension and surprise you with things, but it's just like, this This isn't helpful to me. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think it may be to do with limitations as well, because obviously, rather than having like a dynamic camera, they've opted for uh, separate screens for uh, 
each block in a particular area. So I suppose that does save them a bit on the memory, but it does cause a few problems. Yeah. Um, got a few more um, suggest. Well, a few more comments. Um, so we've got um, Paratigami saying mine is five because you'll give me an egg. You'll give me an egg. Uh, and I like how I'm reading that and just going. I actually have no idea what that is. <laughs> uh, the egg thing you can blame Proton John entirely for that. <laughs> totally fair. Um, we've got Little Pumpkin Two Thousand saying that um, they like "Don't Tell Aunt Rody" song from Resident Evil Seven, which I've never heard. But apparently, that's that's quite nice. Mm, Resident Evil Seven is another incredibly solid title. It's very different from Resident Evil's past, but it still manages to create an amazing game out of it as the end result. Oh, definitely. I mean, I think that's probably one of the biggest surprises of the year, I feel. of At least in gaming, anyway. The, the world is crazy right now, so every day is like a surprise. Um, but in terms of gaming, like the fact that Resident Evil 7 came out and everyone was just like, this is very different, but actually this is this is very good. We like this. And that's quite nice to see because obviously Resident Evil have been going through rather a rough patch after 4 because 5 came out and everyone was just like, they, came, they went out and bought it, but they were just like, eh, it's not not quite as good and then six came out of him and was just like oh this is this is not good and obviously there was what was it was it operation raccoon city or yeah ugh. yeah there was that the one multiplayer that was particularly awful and everyone was just like yeah resident evil's dead well and what then... about umbrella chronicles corpse or was it umbrella corpse yeah or that's something it like that. yeah i can't remember what his full name was but that was the moment was just like, ooh, the franchise is in pretty big trouble. And then uh, they came out with Resident Evil 7, and everything is sort of seeming to be right in the world of Resident Evil, which is, is nice to see. Yeah, a lot of the side games didn't really do all that well, with perhaps one exception being Co Veronica. That was a pretty decent side game. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, got another. Least favourite moment from Axel Ryman, which is Resident Evil 7. Marguerite's hive vagina. Oh yes. god, that scene was so gross. <laughs> it was so effective, but it's so gross. Yeah, I don't think I need to see that, thank you very much. <laughs> and I very I, much I, wish I, I could unsee that. <laughs> I have no experience or context in this, so uh, I'm just laughing right now. Yeah, to be fair, I kind of want to wash my mouth out, having said that. So I can only imagine what actually watching it does to a person. What is Code Veronica exactly? Is it like a side story, or...? I, it is a side story. It's not a numbered Resident Evil, certainly. It follows uh, Claire Redfield, I believe, doing the whole searching for a brother thing. And uh, it gives you a little bit more of a insight to Umbrella in general. Alright, now we get to go over here, and I believe the scene that I was talking about earlier that's probably still going to scare the bejeebus out of me is coming up pretty soon. Oh, good. Uh, I will enjoy your fright, folk. <laughs> the uh, thing is, I know it's coming, but I also know there is absolutely nothing I could do to stop probably the audible yelp that's going to happen. <laughs> I look forward to it. Don't forget, folks, that for a mere $5 donation, although it can be 5 and up to, you know, any amount, you can get entered into a raffle to get a American PSN download code for Sonic Mania. And uh, I'm pretty sure the PS4 is like region free, so you can just make a US account and play it. But uh, yeah, there you go. So if you want Sonic Mania, just make sure when you're donating $5 and up to leave a comment saying, I want Sonic Mania or something to that effect. And obviously leave your username in the comments. Otherwise we won't know who it is. And uh, you can donate as many times as you want for multiple entries. So, uh, come on, let's get to 2,000. Either today, tomorrow, or the day after. So there's some wires here that you can grab a hold of, but they are pretty much completely useless. You don't actually need them at all. There are quite a few red herrings, or at least things, that you can kind of pursue to get some 
lore and things like that. Um, oh my god! <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. It always gets me, I think it's gonna be now, isn't it? And then, like, it comes two seconds later and it's... Oh, I hate it so much! That was well worth the wait. Alright, uh, let's use uh, the first aid spray and pick up this one, because the chances are we're never coming into this room again. <laughs> oh, fucking hell, I hate that liquor. That's like the one liquor that will always get the vast majority of people. To be uh, fair, that's a very realistic, uh, you know, reaction to that kind of thing. I think mine would be a lot more high-pitched and a lot less dignified if that happened in real life. <laughs> oh yeah, if that happened in real life, it's like, oh my god! All right, there's some red herbs there we may want to pick up later. And we can't go into that particular door until much later on. All right, what's behind here again? Ah, yes, I remember now. This is where you can pick up another key, but I think we don't actually need that key. But um, obviously there's a few places where you can uh, open treasure chests and the like, and... Uh, drawers that contain bonus things like the handgun parts we picked up earlier but I believe the handgun parts are pretty much the best thing you can get so you don't necessarily need the other keys as long as you have those handgun parts because that makes the handgun usable throughout the entire game uh Volk are you getting the hot pants and jacket outfit uh probably not I believe to get that you need to do something like right near the beginning of the game that involves ignoring the bullets on the counter and finding a very specific zombie that I believe is one of the developers of the game. Or maybe uh, a reference to a past Resident Evil, and then that gives you a key which you can then use to unlock a part of the game that you normally wouldn't be able to get to. And uh, that gives you alternate costumes for Leon and Claire. There you go. Now, there's usually an important thing to note here. There, there are some green herbs hidden behind this desk. You'll never be able to find them. They are literally completely secret unless you just happen to press X around that area. Oh, apparently it's Brad from the first game. Yeah, that's it, Brad. <laughs> oh my god, Axel, you clipped that thing of Vol screaming like a little <laughs> bitch already. Oh, I was afraid of this. <laughs> Axel? You are making this OCP even more beautiful by the minute. Uh, I want a best of Sony Fon compilation after this. You know, Snake trying to escape that room and rolling into the door and failing, Volk screaming. Oh, you've got it all. Alright, uh, I noticed that there's a fair few herbs coming up, and if I remember correctly, this is where you get your this is where you get your first encounter with the doggos, and the doggos are incredibly annoying and they do lots of damage. Usually on normal difficulty especially is where a lot of people end up dying quite a few times. They are pretty damn rough, let's just say that. There's no real great way to be able to kill them. I have heard that the knife is usually pretty good for doing it, but they're just so zippy. You you know, by the time they're behind you, they're already ready to pounce, and by the time you've turned your slow ass around, you already had a chunk taken out of you. So one thing I'm not entirely keen on in Resident Evil 2, but nowadays I've just kind of gotten used to it, is that these are pretty much tank controls. You can't turn on a dime. You have to literally just stand there, aim, and turn around like that. <laughs> That's the only way you can do it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to store the plug and the valve, because I don't believe we need the valve right now. So we can store that away for now and use that in favor of grabbing... One of our premixed herbs. And we'll take another green herb with us for good measure, because by the time we get past all the corridors, we'll have enough to make another large herb batch. Hmm. Maybe a good idea to save, actually, at this point, because this is where the game does get a little bit more on the rough side. Don't want to yes, leave anything to do. chance. <laughs> please do, mate. Yeah, I, I think we might all cry um, if we end up having to repeat however long it's been since your last save. It well, hasn't uh... been that long. The game has a length that is at times overestimated. It usually gives you the feeling like it's been a long time, but really it's only been like maybe 15 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. 
What character are you going to create in Sonic Forces, Ridge? Um, honestly, I have no idea just yet. I'm going to wait and get the game and then see, mm. because it may be the one thing just strikes me as being nicer or better when I get it. At the minute, I'm kind of just like, I don't know, I need to see all the options. Mm. I'm probably going to uh, go with a bird, just so I can get that sweet, sweet double jump. Very good plan. Yeah. Solid choice, going for the utility. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna make the gayest OC ever. Like you've got no idea. <laughs> Is it gonna be like the ultimate rainbow chicken or something? <laughs> I don't know, but it's gonna be literally the queerest thing to ever exist. I look forward to seeing it. <laughs> and at the same Sonic time, Forces. I'm not entirely sure. HFC play for Sonic Forces coming this December, provided they don't delay it like they did the PC version of Mania. No, it's not gonna be called Suck the Cock. I'm a bit more inventive than that. <laughs> Call it choke for chicken. <laughs> Not that either. Nor will it be called jump the shark or delay the game. Or fuck the duck. <laughs> oh. Just, 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 just no. Well, they have the phrase where you let you go, oh, fuck a duck. Yes, that is indeed a phrase, but uh, please, no. I doubt it would get through, I, I doubt it would get through the naming conventions anyway. This is true, but also we do not need... Is it anatomically correct, DuckTales? Because... Yes, I, that, let, let's that, not go I... there, shall we? <laughs> yeah, uh, I like my brain not filled with such things, thank you. Yes, same here. I like how I'm the one who brought it up, and yeah, I'm the first one to try and shut it down. Well, because you immediately realised what you were about to unleash and you stopped yourself at just the right time. Mm-hmm. So, uh, how like far into the game would you say we are right now? You're just doing Leon's scenario, right? I am, yes, and uh, I think we're about a third of the way through. Sweet, sweet. That's uh, pretty much on estimate then. Uh, what do I think of the DuckTales reboot? Haven't had a chance to watch it. Uh, I think since I'm only on for Resident Evil 2 today, uh, I might either watch that or I might start getting into Rick and Morty because. Uh, I've heard good things, I don't want to be left out of the memes. That's uh, that's my excuse for watching everything. There are memes to be had. You are there. Alright, so... We've got some more herbs. Plenty of herbs. We should be okay. Down the staircase we go. To fight the ferocious doggos. Oh, where are you? I know you're here. There you are. Get over here. Give Wishbone one for me. Right between the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I feel at this point we should say... Uh... No Ooh. animals were harmed during the making of this video game, and we, we do not condone shooting animals in the face, um, unless they are, you know, zombies and they're trying to murder you. Well, uh, that, you know, kind of makes your point moot, considering that's exactly what's happening. <laughs> I mean, as far as the game's concerned, the animals were already harmed long ago. Mm. This is true. Alright, I'm hoping it may come around the corner. The first time I played through this, I made the mistake of coming right here and I had all three of the damn things surround me. It was not fun. Hmm, I can imagine. Ooh, can I get them both? Yes, I can. That went by very smoothly, actually. Hell yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Alright, we can't get in there just yet. That'll be towards the end. So we need to go down this way, I believe. Yeah, this this one right here, that's where we want to be. Just call me Goose Howard. <laughs> uh, geese. You're a funny chap, you are. Is that any in Tekken 7? He will be, yes. He is, uh touted as some additional DLC, so uh, along with Akuma, Tekken 7 has quite a few uh, prolific guest characters. 
It looks really good as well, I gotta say. Oh yeah, Geese Howard is pretty damn legit. Anybody who's uh, watched Salty Bet especially will be able to tell you this. Man, I've not watched that in a while. Not since the days of, like, Twitch Plays Pokemon. Is that still going? I'm gonna see if that's still going. Oh, it's absolutely still going. Twitch Plays Pokemon. I'm not sure about Twitch Plays Pokemon, but Salty Bet is certainly still going. Let's have a little look-see. Twitch Plays Pokemon... Apparently they are running Pokemon Pyrite? It's a Generation 2 ROM hack of Pokemon Crystal. Interesting. Well, I suppose once you've gone through all of the main game series, you kind of do have to start getting creative, otherwise, yeah, that, that just, that's just gonna dive. Mm, I'm gonna be honest, Twitch Plays Pokemon died for me, and I've said this many times, like... They went into Gen 2 too fast, I think there should have been at least a week's break or like a month, maybe, to build some hype. Because they just went right into it, and I think it just killed it dead. And then there were a lot of sound problems for Gen 3, which put me off watching entirely. But, uh, you know, that first run was still great. And uh, I'm not trying to say you shouldn't watch Twitch Plays Book 1. No, it's still entertaining. Good way to pass the term. Definitely, but I think a lot of the uh, initial charm has kind of worn off at this point. And here we go, we are now being introduced for the first time to Ada Wong, and this is at the point of the game where about half of the dialogue is, Ada, wait! <laughs> it's about the same in Resident 4, honestly. I saw the uniform, I thought you were another zombie. Who are you? <laughs> obvious. I love you. But you're just ridiculous in this hey, game. What are you doing here? I'm looking for some guy named Ben. He's one of those reporter types, always looking for a scoop. The chat's right. Why does Leon keep inquiring about Ada's weight? It makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> he's obsessive, I tell you. He's only looked at her for, what, 30 seconds, maybe a minute tops? He's already trying to get personal. I don't like uh, it. I must have her. If we work together, we can move this thing. Give me if possible, I can feel the voice acting through the screen, even with the sound off. <laughs> it's just so easy to take the piss out of. Push, little cat! And uh, that will reveal the way to the next area. So I think we're nearing the halfway point at this stage. I think usually after you get down to like the sewer areas for the first time, I think that's officially the halfway mark. Oh, sweet. Let's get some donations going, y'all. We've had uh, none during the main run yet, but we had a pretty impressive run during the last minute bid war donation thingy. So um, we'll be taking feedback on how we did with the Sony phone, and uh, even though we're still going to be a small event compared to stuff like Platform Mania, which did gangbusters. Uh, we still want to, like, uh, I don't know, take what we can from this event and apply it for next year. Because so far it's been, um, it's been pretty chill for the most part. And, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, my own performance so far. Not to toot my own horn, toot toot. But uh, we could always do better, is what I'm trying to get at. Absolutely. Oh, cool. They might even give us ideas on... Not only just how we can run the event internally, but also just general ideas of what you might like to see in a fun next. We've already got some ideas running around in our head, obviously, but there is always that possibility that someone might come with an idea that makes us go, well, actually, hang on, this one's got a good point. So uh, don't be afraid to give uh, fun themes and suggestions as well, because you may just be the one that kind of scratches the right itch to the back of our heads and we bring it forward into a natural idea. Mm -hmm. You could use the hashtag HFC Sony Fon on Twitter to leave ideas and whatnot if you like. There you go. Hey. I don't know anything. And even if I did, why would I want to tell you? Now, I'm not sure if it's a zombie okay, apocalypse situation, you if you keeping yourself locked in a cell is the best idea or the worst idea. Um, 
Well, it, it depends, because, I mean, in some ways, yes, that is the best idea, because then nothing can get in, so you're less likely to be bitten, but um, then, you know, you kind of either can't get out, or you're not really going to have enough food to survive the zombie apocalypse, and therefore the whole point of that locking yourself away is kind of moot. Yeah. Get out of here before you lead it right to me. So uh, this is our uh, introduction to one of the big bads in this particular game, that being what? Mr. William Birkin. But we won't be seeing him personally until a little bit later on, so it's more just a little bit of foreshadowing just to uh, whet the appetite a little. So is he just pretending to be locked away in a cell? to, you know, be just a dick. Or no, he literally he like... just does not whatever's out there, so he's staying exactly where he is, where he thinks it's safe. It's totally fair. Alright, so this is where I get the information that we need, that we can go to that place over there. And uh, before we leave, we absolutely need this uh, crowbar over here. Which they call a manhole opener, which I suppose is a technical term. But why could they not have just called it a crowbar? Seriously. <laughs> it's, it's like what they do in like Marks and Spencer's where they go, This is a just a crowbar. This is an organic 100% farm reared manhole opener. Ah, <laughs> uh, I miss those adverts. They were so good. Are they, are they not on anymore? No, they stopped doing that, I think, a while ago. Um, I think because some people were complaining that it was too sexual or something, or rather ridiculous like that. I could be completely wrong with that fact, but I seem to recall that being a thing. Would I play Persona knowing that Jojo Part 3 is what inspired it? No, but uh, Part 4 is uh, definitely inspired by Jojo Part 4, I believe. Alright, well, here's a Volcomar top tip for you. You see this red herb right here? Ignore it. It is the devil, and it will unlock the way to these hounds, and they will probably kill you. You okay. might survive, but it ain't worth it for one goddamn red herb, so I suggest just ignoring it completely. Alright. So is that red herb, like, set up on some sort of trap system to unleash the dogs? One would assume so, but, uh, it's not really set, set for certain outright. Well, whoever ever set that up is a dick. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> oh, here you go. Have, have, have this nice, juicy, tasty herb. It's good for the immune system. <laughs> oh, it is just uh, some of too much time on the hands, really. Or either that or a really, really intelligent zombie. And uh, these are spiders. They are complete dicks. Oh. Try to ignore them. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, you can usually walk past those guys, but they are pretty big, so they can block your path. Mm. But uh, we are now in a safe room. It was uh, quite a while from like the first proper safe room to uh, this one, so it's a bit of a hard slog, and we finally get our first blue herb. And uh, combining Ooh. a red, a blue, and a green herb together makes super powerful medicine. It is pretty damn great. And what we want to do is we want to deposit a bunch of stuff here, and we want to take out the three plugs that we were picking up earlier. But first things first, I want to... A, get that blue herb and deposit it so we can save it for later. And take out the ink ribbon so that we can save here, because... I'd rather not want to go through all that again. I don't know about the rest of you, but that feels like an idea to me. Alright, well, let's go ahead and save first. Just so I don't forget. Yes, please do, because I, th I think we, we would all very much appreciate it. Well, that's something that I hadn't noticed up until this point, probably because I wasn't paying enough attention. The fact that you need the ink wheels to... or ink reels or whatever they are, ribbons. to actually... Ribbons, there we go, to actually save. No, that's a classic Rusty Staple moment. Yep, yes. it's a way to limit saving so that you're not just saving constantly, and uh, it creates yeah. an aura of kind of survival where you have to think, is this a good place to save right now, or can I stretch it a little bit further to uh, stretch out my increments a bit more? Mm. Yep. I think it I'm was sure. four when uh, they first started just using actual 
you know, regular save points that didn't require increments, and thank God for that. Yeah, I mean, as much as the system does give it a certain air of uh, wanting to save, like, not just constantly and kind of space them out properly, it did kind of, it's one of those mechanics that very quickly shows its age, and you just rather not after a while. So this is what we have to put in all of the plugs. Unfortunately, we are still missing one, but since we are here, we can actually put these ones in in advance, and that will save us space in our inventory and save us from forgetting later. And uh, we'll be getting the fourth one pretty soon, and Ada will actually be instrumental in getting that for us. Oh yeah, that's right. Resident Evil 7 save system was very similar, except it uses cassette tapes instead. Interesting. Alright, here we go. Here is the, uh... I don't think I've introduced <laughs> the lady pulling hey, tactics of Leon. I'm with the RPD. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> way to go, Leon. You truly are a modern-day yeah. Casanova. Oh, Christ. I'm Leon. I'm with the RPD. Says nothing, shrugs, and just turns around towards that vent over there. Brilliant. That, yeah, that, very smooth. Very smooth. I'm sure she's falling head over heels for him right now. Oh, yeah. Step on my back, Ada. That's just the way Daddy likes it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not even past the watershed yet. Behave. <laughs> well, to be fair, Leon's the one that's getting way ahead of himself here. <laughs> So here we go, we do get to control Ada for a bit. Uh, it's not a huge amount of time, but she does run faster than Leon, and her handgun also fires a lot quicker. And, of course, she has a first aid spray just in case things get a bit dicey. But there are doggos here, we are going to ignore them, however. Good, good. And you only need to get one thing here, but you can also pick up some optional shotgun shells, which is what we're doing right now. Just having a little bit more ammo is always handy, especially since you start to chew through it at the later stages of the game. By which I mean pretty much the Umbrella Lab. I uh, know, actually, I doubt they'd give Resident Evil 2 remake for Mega Man Legends treatment, to be honest with you, especially with how successful Resident Evil 7 was. I don't think Capcom is that irresponsible. No, and also I think, considering that I'm pretty sure the Resident Evil 1 HD... Well, Re Resi 1 remake HD, I think that went down pretty damn well, so... I can't see them not going through with it. And then they'll announce Resident Evil the Twin Snakes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm finding quite funny at the minute is, like, obviously loving all you guys in the chat right now, but obviously it's the fact that there's two infinite things going on at present. Because we've got Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, yeah. and then we've got Infinite from Sonic Forces. And there's times when I'm looking at it and just going, looking at comments, I'm just like, mm, which Infinite are we talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly they are talking about Infinite Stratos. <laughs> clearly. I have no idea what that is. $2,000 and I'll do Infinite's theme. There you go, there's an incentive. What, when we hit $2,000 or a lump sum of $2,000? No, when we hit $2,000 overall. I'm not that stingy. Alright, that's good. And of course, when we hit $2,000, you'll get another incentive game unlocked, so uh, it's a twofer. Yeah, buy mm. one, get one free. And don't forget, if you donate $5 or above, make sure, if you want to, of course, you don't have to, uh, if you want the uh, American PSN code for Sonic Mania, Leave your name and the fact that you want the code, and you can enter multiple times for uh, multiple raffle entries. Yes, indeedy. And 
this should, in theory, get us the last plug we need. Oh no, it's the last key, which then contains the last plug. Well, that, uh, that is definitely good. So we've got the means to get the thing that we need, to unlock the thing that we need. <laughs> it's a bit long-winded, but this is one of the uh, very, very large backtracking bits that I was mentioning earlier. Luckily, they give you a quick way back, so it's not they weren't entirely stingy, thankfully. Get Don't out of the way of the door! <laughs> you filthy animal! Yeah, get your damn paws off me, you damn dirty dogs! Dirty, eh? Oh, you went with the actual dog route. I'm sorry, I thought we were quoting. No, not quite. It would have been uh, thematically appropriate. Aren't there yes. zombie apes or like monkeys in one of the Resident Evils? I want to say Zero. I think there may have been one in Zero, but my memory's a little fuzzy on that one. I mean, that'd be quite cool, to be fair to say. Zombie monkeys. Slightly terrifying, though. Um, also, it's immediately making me think of Pirates of the Caribbean with the zombie monkey in that. I can't reach the ventilation hall. I'm going to have to find another You know, I always yes. look at the scene, and yeah. I always think it would be funny if, whilst Ada was throwing those items up, they got stuck in the middle. What would they do then? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> there we go, we got another Ada wait right there, so if you're keeping count, put another one on the tally. Ah, it's rude to ask a lady's weight, and Jack Crows in the chat says, I'm loving the chillness of the Sony phone compared to Platform Mania. Well, you see, first of all, thank you. Second of all, that's because the uh, FTCR lads are bandmasters, and I just don't have that level of energy, so I'd rather not fake it, because it would be kind of obvious. Yeah. And also, to be fair, we're, we're just much more chill these days which seems kind of hilarious considering <laughs> I know. The, the reasonings behind things that have happened in the past and like we're the ones that are just going yeah it's all fine just just roll with it no i just like the dynamic like ftcr is actually more professional than hfc now which is great because it shows in how well platform mania did and uh it was just really great to be able to actually support that wholeheartedly and, uh, you know, not have any bitterness about it or anything, because uh, we obviously work separately nowadays, and I think that's for the best, because um, they're doing great, we're having a great time over here, so there's no real reason to get to, to work together again and to have any, like, I don't know, falling out or kerfuffles when we're both working so well separately. So uh, I'll gladly give my services to them if they need help or want, like, a co-com in their next marathon, but... Uh, don't expect any FTCR invitations to HSC, and not out of spite, just because they work better on their own. Mm -hmm. And obviously, yeah. I can do the same thing as well. I mean, I'm a little bit of a workhorse when it comes to this sort of thing, so, you know, if if you've got a game out there that's pretty difficult, or if you don't mind having me along or doing anything like that, I'm absolutely down for it. I love charity events, just in general. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck you, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> One thing I was actually going to suggest to us, maybe as close to the time, is we do a runner swap or something. Uh, so, like, Volk, you could go on Platform Mania for a, a game, and we'd have one of them come over to our thing, or something similar like that. So, basically, it's like lending help without actually, you know, working together, so to speak. Are they actually going through that FTCR, like, COCOM auction thing that I was going on about <laughs> in the chat? <laughs> Oh, uh, no, this is just completely me. I've not spoken to Stephen about it at all. I'm just letting him have... I'm letting him bask in victory, so to speak. You too can rent a smoothie for just the low, low price of $15. <laughs> smoothies goes down smooth. Alright, so if you might not be able to guess, there's some uh, foreboding to the extreme over here. Can you just guess what's going to happen? Well, we're in a morgue, so I don't, I don't know. Um, are we going to find someone alive down here or something? We may find someone unalive. <laughs> oh yes, just to clarify, there have got to be new donations, uh, like five dollars and above, to be entered into the Sonic Mania raffle. You can't get cheeky and be backdated. Oh no, we already did that for the incentive games. It's only fair, after all. Alright, so we got the keycard, which will give us access to the armory. 
And uh, that'll give us a bunch of cool stuff, I believe, or just at least the weight in the next area. I believe it is mostly ammo, but then again, we are hurting for shotgun ammo in particular, so I would very much like some more of that, please. God, member, you've already donated more than enough. Don't put yourself into poverty trying to help our cause, mate. Maybe when payday rolls around, which are, I honestly planned the marathon. Even though Volk's in charge, I'm like co head mostly. Uh, like to coincide with people's paydays and whatnot. And uh, Smoothies was very kind to me. Uh, he didn't actually want to take any more donations because they had to extend Platform Mania a day. And uh, he said to me, you know, we can stop it if you prefer. And I was like, no, no, don't do that. You, you should uh, look after your own and whatnot. And uh, yeah, hopefully we get a few more towards the end of the marathon. But uh, I'm pretty happy with what we've raised so far. I just want to, uh, I want you guys to see some of the uh, incentive stuff we've uh, got to plan for you because there's a few guns towards the end. Definitely. There's a couple there I'm looking forward to because they're games I don't necessarily have the most experience with either. Well, Simpsons Wrestling is one that I quite enjoyed and it's still hard as nails. So I'm expecting that to uh, give me a bit of problems. Mm. Uh, Bit Ribbon way. is pretty easy to be honest with you once you actually get used to it. It's pretty intimidating mm -hmm. at first, especially when the actual rhythm mechanics aren't exactly what you would expect. Mm. But otherwise, once you actually get used to it, it's actually pretty simple. And there's, I believe, a couple of games I'm meant to be doing incentive for coming up without revealing too much. Those two games, they're going to be interesting. Let me just say that. Oh, definitely. Um, I'm quite excited for the one after the next incentive game. That's the one that I'm going, oh, yes, I want, I want that one to happen. Not that I'm part of doing the co-coming for that, but still. it's That's fine by me. And uh, yes, Elements, mm -hmm. we are we have been going for just about two hours at this point. Um, I believe we we're over the halfway point now in the game, yes? We are, and we just got the Magnum as well, which is probably one of the best weapons in the game. Next to the Grenade. Good, so we're just gonna be good, so we're just gonna blitz the rest of the game then, yes? Uh, not quite, but it does make the bosses way easier. Um, if you miss the Magnum, a lot of the bosses become quite difficult because... Ooh. Whilst the shotgun's very powerful, it it has a long um, recoil, so you do leave mm -hmm. yourself open quite often. So the yeah. Magnum helps remedy that whilst keeping some of the relative power of the shotgun. The only issue is, is that there isn't really that much Magnum ammo to go around. So it's mm -hmm. something you don't necessarily want to use on anything but bosses and uh, some of the particularly hard enemies that are coming up towards the end. That's fair. So, um, Volk, we've got a question here from Zork787. Does Resi 2 have Crimson Heads? Uh, Crimson Heads? I don't believe so. There's a couple of enemies we haven't seen yet. There's, uh, the Grey Lickers, which are essentially superhuman lickers. Um, mm -hmm. you've got stronger zombies that still seem to fall down like the rest, and then you have, uh, plant beasts that will be coming up pretty soon as well. Mm-hmm. But no Crimson and... Heads, thankfully. <laughs> Oh, definitely. And also we've got... I, I totally agree with the Grey Thunder of between this and Metal Gear Solid, is this the actually the key card a thon? Uh, not quite. This game doesn't have nearly as many key cards. It's more to do with keys than anything. Or should we just call this the key thon instead? We'll call it the Arise thon <laughs> Just keys everywhere. <laughs> Donation incentive, get extra keys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds good to me. <laughs> Let's just quickly rebrand everything whilst Tom's away for a couple of minutes. <laughs> we just spend the entire fun just playing really, really old crappy Flash games. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that does actually sound kind of awesome, but at the same time, I have standards. <laughs> Yeah. If you want to see some shitty Flash games get played, uh, just check out the Ret to Play lads. They have like a whole like, mini-series of just really bad Flash games, including the Arise series. Nice. <laughs> so, um, if you want to see such greats as Arise and Arrival in Hell, for instance, that's the place to go. Sounds like a plan. Alrighty then. Just 
now we can pick up this red herb. Um, one of the items we picked up earlier, we had a submachine gun and a side pack, which increases your inventory size. Uh, usually the machine gun is better suited for Claire, but there is nothing stopping Leon from picking it up. So, uh, if you want to grab it for Leon as well, you absolutely can do. I just tend to leave it more out of habit. So, we've got another hmm. puzzle here. Um, there's a portrait, if I just show you, right over uh -huh. here, that has a cog in there. And it's okay. the cog that we need. There's also some film down here if you want some more law based imagery. You don't necessarily need it. It's there if you just want to get into the nitty gritty of the game. Nice. And what it's about. So, uh, much in the same way as the fireplace before, we need to light this here furnace. And we need to hit these in a certain order. And that order is middle, right, and then left. Ah, nice. Um, right, uh, Jet Kronos, um, it isn't just 11 movies for the Ghibli-thon, it is actually going to be all of them. So, we are going through all, I think it's 21 at this point, might be 22, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, we're just going straight through the Miyazaki collection. I believe we're going through in um, Ghibli collection order. But we may also be going through in chronological order then because there's the whole thing with The Cat Returns being a sequel to um, Whisper of the Heart, but Whisper of the Heart comes later in the uh, Miyazaki collection, well, the Ghibli collection, than Cat Returns, which is weird, but that's fine. Um, yes, I do believe we will be doing Ocean Waves tournaments. Um, that's, that's certainly in there, so it's probably probably that one. Um, I'm not sure if this has been confirmed either way or not, because I have inquired about this a couple of times, and I think mm -hmm. when I've asked each time it's been undecided, but are you going to be doing the uh, stuff that Miyazaki did before he made Studio Ghibli, like the early stuff he did before he actually founded the studio and then obviously made all the uh, Ghibli stuff that pe many people know and love today? Yeah, um... Honestly, I'm not sure at present. Um, we've got definitely got Ariessi, which people are asking about, because that is part of the Ghibli collection. Um, but the stuff before Ghibli, not 100% sure. Because um, I know that there's the Cas Castle of Cagliostro and the Little Norse Prince are the two main ones that are sort of part of the Ghibli collection, but they're also sort of not. Well, yeah, because they're pre-Ghibli, but it's pretty much all yeah. directed by the same guy. And uh, just exactly. to say, Castle of Cagliostro, pretty much one of my all-time just favourite movies in general. Not even just yeah. animated, just movies in general. I mean, especially for its time, the voice acting was pretty damn good, especially for early on. Mm. And uh, furthermore, it just had so many great scenes that even Stu the likes of Steven Spielberg commented on as being like some of the best. Like, especially that car chase scene near the beginning. So well choreographed, it's fantastic. Yeah, I do remember having a very good time with Castle of Cagliostro, so I'll see if I can persuade Tom to include them, but that'll, that'll probably depend on time and all that sort of jazz. Yeah, that's fair enough. I would very much like to see but... it covered, though. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I too would like to see it co all covered as well, because it's nice and interesting to talk about, because it's obviously it's the pre-Ghibli stuff, and there's a lot of stuff in them that you can see then went on to influence later. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ghibli movies. Yeah, I mean, even if you only include, like, a couple of the key ones, like, as you said, uh, Cagliostro and Little Norse Prince, I mean, you don't necessarily have to go through all of them, but I would like to at least see a couple of the more prolific ones, certainly. Yeah, I mean, I think those two are the ones that I'd probably say, because obviously Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind is part of the Ghibli collection, so that'll definitely be getting covered. Okay. Um, but the other two, we'll see. Um, and Goldmember PB, um, at present, I don't think it is just going to be me and Tom. It's mostly going to be me and Tom. I think we're uh, by Baldy, you and me, right? Oh, is it all going to be us? Oh, that's fair enough. Um, so yes, yes, it will be. <laughs> there you go. Unless anybody wants to, you know, join in, and in which case I'm totally happy for that. 
I mean, I would probably wouldn't mind popping by the Cagliostro just because it's so near and dear to me, but that's entirely on you guys. Oh, you know, just mark out which ones you want to be on. It's fine if you're on every other one. That's fair enough. I think Cagli I think there's only really a few that I can really relate to proper, like Cagliostro, Totoro, and all that, but... I'm not really that huge of a Ghibli buff, I just, like, pick out some of the key Ghibli movies that just absolutely floored me. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me see here, what do we need? Oh, the box run of uh, Gran Turismo 2 is now live and available to watch on the YouTube channel. Hooray! Yay! Just trying to think if I need the valve handle or not. No, I need the crank. This is where I need the crank. So, uh, let's grab that and, uh... Head up to the third floor of the police department, which is a floor we have yet to visit. Hmm. Well, visit. Will probably. there be more zombies? Uh, yes, there will probably be more zombies. <laughs> uh, especially in the uh, umbrella lab. Like it starts off all quiet, but then when you start backtracking a bit, suddenly just zombies appear all over the place, and that's where problems start to occur. God, my mother, we're not doing new no Kuni as part of the Ghibli fun. Yeah, because that is a game and not, in fact, a movie. And also, it's very long from what I remember of it, so... Might not be the thing that's going to occur. No, just the movies. Gotta keep it consistent. Oh, yes, uh, J. Cocoon uh, Ghibli was also responsible for, and that is probably one of my favourite RPGs. Um, I'm not sure if he had any involvement with J. Cocoon 2, though. Which I admittedly have a lot more experience with, but I played a bit of J. Cocoon 1 as well, I completed it a couple of times, but that's like nothing compared to the amount of times I've completed J. Cocoon 2. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might be on like my 10th or 11th time completing that game, and I'll probably be doing a 12th completion on the live stream just to show it off. No, Vault played Gran Turismo I was there. I have proof. Yes, we have the meme. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we have a $6 donation from Umbreonic65. Hello, oh, I'm oh. back again, continuing to donate and whatnot. This shouldn't be a surprise, but to put this towards naming Cloud D-I-K-H-E-D-R. Wonderful. And of course, since that's over $5, you can be entered into the Sonic Mania uh, American PSN code raffle if you want. It's up to you. Let your uh, decision be known in the chat. Oh, nice, we just passed uh, $1,600 redos. Hey! And one cent. $1,600 and one cent. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, put Umbryonic 65's name down. And uh, don't forget, if you donate again, you can, uh, obviously, if it's $5 and over, you can get another entry. So, so far, Umbryonic 65 is winning the Sonic Mania American <laughs> PSN code raffle. I keep having to state it's an American PSN code because you'll need a US account in order to, uh, I guess, download it. Purchase, purchase download, whatever the uh, correct terminology is, so there you go. But do you want to brew like 65 to have that glory? To be able to sample the joys of Sonic Mania? Well, if you want to pick to the post, donate. It's that simple. Oh, uh, it's slightly gross and it's so, so pixelated nowadays, so it's not nearly as frightening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it just isn't these days, but, you know, that legitimately scared the shit out of me way back when. Well, I mean, to be fair, it probably would do because, like, that was the era where games weren't as photorealistic as they try to be these days. And so that would have actually been quite terrifying. I think this guy solved Ben's food issue. Look, he's feeding him. <laughs> I don't think it's quite the same thing. God, give the man a chance to speak, Leon. Just go, please, can you hear me? Answer, let me shake you vigorously just to make sure. Ben. <laughs> Bitter irony. The chief of police. Co conspirator. Uh, this is where you find out that the Raccoon City Chief of Police is also in cahoots with Umbrella and agreed to help them with their experiments. And took a very sizable bribe as well. 
Unfortunately, no, we cannot give you bags of chocolate coated nuts except for the Sonic Mania code. Alas. That is a uh, very chestbuster esque. And unfortunately, Ben, the poor sod that he is, died. I don't think he's going to be recovering from that anytime soon. Not even as a zombie. No, I mean, he kind of got split into like, multiple pieces, so yeah, he, he, he dead. Yeah. So yeah, this talks about the events of uh, Resident Evil 1, how they lost the uh, Mansion Lab facility due to the actions of Albert Wesker. Uh, saying that his uh, things have no uh, lasting impact on their operation. Uh, saying how stars might have evidence to their things, uh, continuing monitor progress, etc, etc, and that is from William Birkin. And this is where the Chief of Police is, uh, you're, well, you're informed that the Chief of Police has taken a very sizable bribe and is, uh, helping to develop the G and T virus, which is the thing that's causing all these zombies to happen. Of course, William Birking is taking offence to that because the G and T viruses are his baby and he wants to keep it all to himself, the greedy bastard. But then again, it probably would have been better kept to himself, but of course, then we wouldn't have all the other Resident Evil games. Uh, again with the Ada Wait. There you go, if you keep in count, tally up another one. You know what I think I'm gonna do? Is when we reach the end of Resi 2, I will donate a dollar for every Ada. Wait, the game throws at us. Alrighty oh, then. You. We'll see so, you. Uh, <laughs> Don't even keep a count. We're on three at the minute, so uh, that's fine by me. <laughs> three whole dollaridos. Hell yeah. Right, so now we have to go back to where the uh, plugs were. Actually, there was a green herb over there. I'm going to pick that up. Before I head over there. Better safe than sorry. <laughs> I like having a little stockpile of herbs, especially for when you get to the later points. Which we're pretty much at now, but it's more for the labs than anything else. Hmm. So, how much longer... Do you think we have on Resi 2 at this point? Um, maybe an hour or so. Hour and a half tops, I would say. Yeah, nice. that's, a, that's a keeper on the estimate. If we're lucky, we may finish uh, earlier than the estimate. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, tournaments. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I, I'm liking that idea in some way. So, well, basically, um, tournament said, say before an Ada wait point, trigger it, then reset the game, and then we'll get more money that way. Um, well, that is, yes, that's a very good idea. No, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I wouldn't want to bankrupt your ass. Don't worry about that. You are relatively safe. Don't worry. Good. <laughs> but I won't be held responsible for any accidental uh, occurrences. Well, that's fine. I can live with that. Uh, someone um, hoovering in the background? No, that is probably somebody outside doing um, some stuff next door, unfortunately. Uh, my dad has been told that I'm doing this sort of thing, so it actually isn't him. He knows full well that I'm doing this. But unfortunately, I can't uh, influence the neighbours any. So, oh, no. It's alas, fine. Alas. Uh, thank you, Woodchip Right, for subscribing. We appreciate that. Uh, unfortunately, subscriptions so far only benefit the uh, HSC live stream. Uh, if you wanted to donate to Child's Play, there is a widget uh, below. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much for that. Just making sure I did mix all those herbs properly. Yep. Um, if you mix a green, a red, and a blue herb together, I believe that makes the most powerful healing item in the game. You can be literally an inch away from death and you'll be pretty much fully healed. And you'll be cured of poison if you happen to get spat on by a spider or something to that like. Mm. Did they take the blue herb out? Because I don't remember that in Resi 4. I think they did in the end. I think it, I think the blue herb wasn't really all that useful in the long term, other than obviously enhancing the power of your mixed greens. Yeah, and to be fair, I'd be slightly um, nervous of eating anything that's blue, 
that's come out of the ground because it, it's not necessarily an entirely natural herb colour, to be fair. Not really, no. I will agree with you there. Alright, let's deposit our uh, super herb over there as well, and that way we've got some space for later as well. Uh, one thing. Oh, I... yeah, the, the yellow or gold herbs in Resi 4, yeah. Because there was no poison, of course. Interesting. Alright, I'm not sure if we need the valve right now, but I'm tempted to take it along with me just in case. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do. I know we're gonna- I know the valve becomes very important pretty soon. Oh no, that's in the next uh, proper storeroom, so we can actually store it away quite safely for now. And then well, that's good. Take a first aid spray with us. Yeah, there's like you one specific it. place where you literally need the valve, otherwise you can't really advance and it becomes... Probably one of the most important items in the game, so definitely don't want to leave it behind at that critical moment. And uh, we'll be coming up towards our first boss of the game pretty soon as well. Well, our first proper boss. I'll go so I've been going quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never. Yeah, they don't really start throwing the major big dudes at you until uh, this point onward, basically, because. Mm. They kind of put on the slow burn. They make it about the zombies and the other assorted experiments for now, and then they start throwing the big stuff at you. I mean, I have to say, it's not as bad as um, Alice Madness Returns, um, which is like the slightly horror gothic y take on the Alice in Wonderland story in video game form. Because, um, yeah, Alice Madness Returns doesn't have a boss fight until the final boss. Well, and even then, it's a rubbish boss fight. Same with Spire and the Dragonfly, really. Yes, and that is also quite rubbish. So. Alright, I do believe he is down. <laughs> he does have a very, very long death animation, is the only I was gonna problem. say, but we're and... still watching it. <laughs> He unleashes those little buggers fairly regularly. Now, you could waste your time uh, squishing each one of them individually, but you don't actually need to. Um, mm. If you leave the room and come back, they'll all just magically disappear. Nice. Oh, there's a collector's edition for Dragon Ball Fighter Z. I did actually Ooh. see that. That does look pretty damn nice. I may have to pick uh -oh. that up. Oh, shit. Oh, I so did 100% uh, enter the Dragonfly in a stream once. Never again. I've done my time. And I you want know, out. I think I 100%ed it once a very long time ago and then just thought, no, nope, never touching it ever again because it is awful. Uh, Richie, what uh, Kingdom Hearts worlds do you want in K3? I mean, so the one that I expect and do want is the Frozen World because I th think, in terms of what is possible in Kingdom Hearts 3, and what they can do with that world, there is a lot, and it could be very, very exciting. And also, it would stand out amongst all the other Disney worlds, because obviously the only like snowy, icy area that we've had so far was the Land of Dragons, and even then it was only a bit of it, and it was obviously much more the Chinese theme, and that was the, the main draw of the world, so all just like a proper snowy area. Um, that would that make me quite happy. Um, and also since they seem to be doing um, more recent Disney films, apart from obviously Toy Story, but Toy Story, oh my god, um, I'd love to see Wreck-It Ralph. Hmm. I think I if know. you set it in uh, Sugar Rush or oh, right. yeah. um, in uh, Fix-It Felix Jr., then those could be quite interesting, or if they set it in um, the central station or whatever the heck it was called. I think there's a lot of possibilities. Obviously, there's a slight difficulty of it's so heavily based in video games, but I think that there are possibilities of what they could do with it that would be quite exciting. Mm. Well, you're, you all know why I want gargoyles, and it's never happening. No. Oh, such a shame, too. I would have loved to have seen that. Apparently it was actually considered. Oh. 
That just makes me even more well. upset now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, and Fort Rock Legends also brings up a good point of the Christmas Land area um, in Halloween Town. That was also a good snowy area. But I want like proper, proper bright, fun, frozen goodness. I don't know if I'd call frozen fun, but uh. Ah, oh, come on! You know you love it in some way, shape, or form. No tangles, butter. Well, yeah. <laughs> Although, to be fair, I would say it depends on what you want from a film, because Frozen's much more Broadway. Um, Tangled is much more indie. Yeah, I suppose. But yes, Ten Elements brings up a good thing of... Atlantis would be a pretty awesome world. Yes, as would the yeah. Black Cauldron. Yes, I think we talked about that, actually. I think we did as well. I would love to see Atlantis, personally. Just for the crazy Italian guy with all the explosives, I think he would just be amazing. <laughs> yes, yes he would. All right, now we get to uh, play with some more herbs and make another super herb. Even though it looks suspiciously like something you would snort through your nostrils as opposed to just consuming, but we'll ignore that minor detail. We'll just plop it in our box, keep it for a rainy day, and we'll unlock another secret, I think. Oh! Uh, it's not a major secret, but it does give you some magnum rounds, which are, as you may well know if you've played Resident Evil 2 before, very few and far between. So getting your hands on any and all of them is uh, very much recommended. Down we go. Mm -hmm. So are we going into the umbrella lamps? We now? are making our way there now, which you have to go through the sewers in order to get to. Ah, okay. It's fair enough. The lamps themselves isn't really that long, maybe a half hour or so. So once we get there, you know we're pretty close to the end. So, are the labs the end game point? Or... Yes. Okay, they are the awesome. end game point. So, there's like maybe a half hour and then the final boss fight. And then we are done. Wow. But we have another prolific boss fight left to go, so we're not quite there yet. Actually, there's two. Ooh. Yeah, they throw the boss fights at you in clusters, so you don't see anything for a good hour or so, and then suddenly, all the bosses ever. Yeah, that, that, that sounds about right for uh, Capcom. They, they really like um, end-loading their boss fights, <clears throat> boss rushes. Pretty much, and in the case of Konami, I suppose they have the same thing with Gradius as well. Alright, now we want the valve handle. So, absolutely must make sure we have that. And I think I'll take some ink ribbons as well, just in case. And uh, we'll deposit the shotgun for now, because I don't really think we need it right this moment. But I'll keep the shotgun shells just in case we find some more. But I want to keep at least one space in my inventory. Alright, let's go. So, just, just a quick question, have we actually got sort of... I know it's not exactly co-op characters going on here, but have we sort of got a co-op moment in Resi 2? Uh, kind of. Ada kind of follows you around occasionally, and she'll shoot at things if she's in range to do so, but for the most part, she's just kind of there to follow you around. That's fair enough. Alright, so there we go. We got another Ada moment right here. So obviously this woman is of um great importance to uh Miss Wong over here. But for what reason we don't quite yet know, but we'll find out soon enough. 
We gotta go up here and avoid some gross co cockroaches because we don't want that. Oh no! If there's two things I hate in this world, it's cockroaches and crying babies. Mhm. Mm yeah, look at how gross they cockroach are. Would be truly terrible. And we got a fair bit of cutscenes to go here, so uh, there's gonna be a lot of story thrown at you. <laughs> Honestly, that's fine. I've been playing Eternal Tanata. That is like one of the kings at ridiculously long cutscenes. Oh my god, like, Spar brings up an amazing point. What if Kingdom Hearts exists as a game in the cage version of Racket Ralph? <gasps> wow. Yeah, that that would be that would be KH exception. That was, I'm down for that. You could do some really major mind fucking if you did something like that. I mean, more so than usual when it comes to Kingdom Hearts plot, but you know, they could take it to a whole other level. So, um, I believe her name was Annetta Birkin, who we're currently being held at gunpoint by, and she is the wife of William Birkin. You're going to have to remind us who William Birkin is. Uh, he was the big monster <laughs> thing that we saw earlier, and he is the creator of the virus that's been making all these zombos. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I won't let anyone take the G virus away from me. Basically, well, the reason why she's so pissed... Quite soon. Yeah, she's kind of pissy for... It's capable of creating I'd say questionable reasons. She's mostly trying to protect what's left of William. And also, in the event that she can't actually do that, uh, trying to mostly protect his legacy. Just, you know, it's something to remember him by, I suppose, in some kind of weirdly sadistic way. And it's all Umbrella's fault. Yeah, but, you know, causing major zombie outbreak, potentially killing off the whole human population. Not the best legacy, because there won't be anyone around to remember it at the end, because everyone will be a zombie. That is true. This is where you see the unfortunate death through. of William Birkin now. This way. Ooh! So, um, Umbrella came by to get the sample that uh, William Birkin created. My precious G mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, he gets a little bit on the uh, crazy side when he uh, makes this thing, so obviously he's grown attached and he looks a bit like Leon, so there you go. <laughs> I think it's just like everyone in that day had the same haircut or something like that. <laughs> and the same face. Or Leon just has an extended family, I don't know. William Birkin, I'm like Leon's second cousin twice removed. It only took ten shots for him to go, wait, you might ruin the sample. I'm taking care of that bullet wound first. That Stay bullet here. wound? You mean that as well as the other seven, eight, nine that were also pelted into him? <laughs> Just taking care of one ain't gonna be enough, I'm afraid, sister. No, and also, you know, he's got a zombie virus, so I mean, he can live for as long as he likes, really, until, you know, we murder him because he's a zombie. Yep, that was his only means and hope of survival, but of course it's having those wicked side effects that we are currently seeing with the whole I have an eyeball for a shoulder, for instance. I mean, don't, don't you have an eyeball on your shoulder? Like, it's perfectly normal. I've got one right now. It's winking. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might want to get that checked out, Tom, to be fair. Yeah, probably, yeah. Must be the most awkward place to put eye drops, though. <laughs> Jesus. What is this thing? Well, I suppose it depends where on your shoulder it was. Because you can sort of, yeah. To be fair, it might be actually easier than trying to put eye drops in your actual eyes. Because you don't have to do. Are we still having this conversation? Yes, Tom. We are. 
It's important stuff the world needs to know. And there's a bit of a foreshadowing here of the rats, because the rats were actually the ones that were so responsible were for spreading the virus across Raccoon City. As a result of his virus so it was kind <laughs> of an accidental thing, and I think Umbrella seems to be spending most of their time either trying to recover and perfect it more, and in other cases, just trying to cover it up. <laughs> Having William Birkin as a guest character in Soul Edge, that... That would be oddly fitting. Hmm. And create offspring. No. Ugh, offspring? No. Why? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> We're having to like respond to stuff on a delay here, so I apologize if it doesn't exactly line up per uh, se. So. <laughs> Literally slaps her off the <laughs> railing. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't laughing at that, I was laughing at her to our fans in the chat. <laughs> Who would win? Medieval Europe or a sick rat? Yeah, probably the sick rats, to be fair. Black, black plague, flawless victory. <laughs> yeah. Although, that said, I seem to recall hearing various things about um, the bubonic plague and rats and all sorts. I, d I don't remember whether there's some sort of um, confusion nowadays in uh, history of people thinking that the rats weren't necessarily the entire cause of the spread of the plague. Because, uh, on the whole, rats are actually surprisingly clean creatures. Okay. Because they, 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 they like to clean themselves up, but... Ah, there we go. Thanks, Tell Element. So it was the fleas on the rats that carried the plague. So it wasn't the rats themselves that were the, the problem. It was It was the fleas. Well, you know how stigma works. Indeed. Alright, get the handgun ready. And let's go see what's going on with Vader, if we can find her ass. No, uh, Leon. He probably will. Yeah. Ada, wait! That counts as one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's fine, we're at four dollars. Yeah, you gotta be careful. If you say it yourself, then we're gonna take it off you. If one of us say it, then it doesn't count, because that's just trolling. <laughs> so we're gonna take the wolf medal, which is a uh, part of the uh, puzzle piece needed to open a mechanism that we are just about to come up towards. But first, we've got to avoid more spiders, because we know we love giant venom-spitting spiders. Well, of course. Look how adorable they are. Don't you just want to go over there and hug one? Actually, that's a no. lie. I definitely would not want to do that. I think I'm fine on that point, really, because these are terrifyingly large spiders. I get antsy just around people's pet tarantulas. <laughs> I mean, that's bad want... enough, but <laughs> this... I don't, I don't understand why you would want a spider as a pet. I'm sorry. Like, even if you like spiders, what's the point? Yeah. Uh... Game, I want to use this. I don't think you understand. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, where the hell did you come from? So <laughs> drive by, motherfucker! Well, it's because it, uh, it, it, it wanted to give you a hug, Volk. Clearly, you were saying about giving them hugs. That one was just taking you up on the offer. <laughs> up, I didn't mean you. literally. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is what we need the valve for in order to uh, bring down the bridge that we crossed with Ada earlier. So, this is all part of the same area, just that we need to get to that upper area eventually. But, we want to make our down way down below. And we got a save point handily next to the boss fight that we are about to encounter. It's very helpful, that. It's a fun boss fight, but it is incredibly easy. It's just cool, more than anything. And I can appreciate cool. Cool is always good. Cool is what Hideki Kamiya is all about. It's relatively stress-free. The stressful fight comes after the croc. And that is the uh, encounter with William Birkin and like the proper time that you fight him for the first time. Because you fight him twice, I believe. Mm -hmm. 
I suppose you could technically say you fight him three times if you count like that weird face hugger type thing that you planted in Ben, but I'm not entirely sure if you can. Oh my god, Final Fantasy 15 Pocket Edition looks adorable. It does indeed. I'm not sure. Well, I'm, I'm intrigued by it. Let's just put it that way, because it, it is really, really bloody adorable. Oh, you know, it looks like a perfect fit for Switch. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking might be a thing that is going to occur. Because obviously there were rumours about Final Fantasy XV Switch, and um, it makes sense, because as much as I love the Switch, it can't run Final Fantasy XV as it is, because the base PS4 can't really run Final Fantasy XV as it is. So, the Switch would probably die. Um, so, it makes sense. Don't know how well it'll do, and really... I'm gonna have a proper, proper watch to the trailer later. Although, as they said, that version is not necessarily the Switch version, so we could be getting a slightly different version for Switch. Mm. So, we shall see. Very interesting. All right, now we got a channel of Inner Steve Irwin here to uh, take care of this crocky over here. Oh Crikey. Jesus! Come on, grab the food. It is absolutely food. It's not food. Oh, and that, my friends, is why we Brits like to keep a stiff upper lip. Otherwise, that happens. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, it's certainly one way to take down a giant bloody alligator crocodile thing. <laughs> His shrimp is well and truly on the barbie. Indeed. <laughs> it's been there for a while. <laughs> it's charred at this point. Just completely. Right, so, uh, I guess we need the eagle medal to get past the waterfall. Uh, yes, we do. We put in the wolf medal already, so we now need the eagle one, which we'll be collecting in just a moment. But we got oh, a rendezvous we... with Ada first, and uh, get ourselves we... patched up, because we did get shot a little while ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a $5 donation. Um, I'm not sure of, like, who donated it, so could you please make yourself known in the chat and I believe it's for that? Foretold Legends, I think. Okay. Ada, wait! But on a, a serious note, that one doesn't count. Now I see another charity going to a place for a, a good cause. Around 12 days ago, I also donate, donated to, or for, New Legacy Inc.'s Rumble Fund Marathon, where that money went to a Canadian company that helped fight cancer. Nice to hear your voice on Twitch again, and Tom, and also, when all else fails, be a one-trick pony and slap someone off a ledge to their plummeting death. Also, Axel, when will we get the fault in our summons again? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so now we're up to where Ada was originally, so, uh, as you may notice, the bridge is now gone. Oh, okay. wait, that's something I forgot to do. You were actually meant to use the crank again before we actually went to the boss, but that's okay. Just a little bit of backtracking. It saves you a bit okay. of time, though, so if you are doing the uh, quote-unquote speed run, which you need to do to get all the cool shit, uh, you may want to make sure you do that before you fight the crocky. Mm hmm. Uh, Foresold already has Sonic Mania, so he will abstain from being added to the draw. No worries, mate. Fairy Snuff, it's good to have your donation regardless, so uh, thank you kindly, sir. Indeed. Also, you can use that $5 to uh, put it toward one of the incentives if you would like to, but obviously you're not forced to whatsoever. Mm hmm. But, you know, you may as well uh, make your money go as far as possible in these donation marathon things. Exactly. Alright, so let's go ahead and fix this uh, issue we had earlier. So, go ahead and use uh, Steam to put this bridge back up. And in theory, if you're just playing through this game casually, you can also uh, grab the herbs here and uh, do a little bit of backtracking. Uh, I think I'll take a green herb to go, because it's a little bit of healing, so it's a good way to uh, top yourself up without wasting one of your uh, fully mixed herbs or a uh, first aid kit. Mm. Alright, so now we fixed that uh, minor lapse in memory. can continue. 
Uh, I haven't watched My Hero Academia yet, but uh, once Sony Fun's over and uh, Volk and I have free time again, uh, we're going to watch that in between recording new Sparta P PC episodes, which is on break right now. It'll be back once Sony Fun's done, and uh, playthroughs and such. Oh, yes, and mm -hmm. uh, we got some plans for playthroughs in mind already, so it's just a case of figuring out when to record those and uh, when exactly we're going to put those out. Mm-hmm. All right, so there I will, we go. I will say, uh, after this week, it'll probably just be Sony Fun uploads uh, for a little bit, so uh, they're a bit cheeky of me, but please try and support HFC during that time, because uh, we'll be like just taking a break from all the Sony Fun for all and uh, getting stuff ready to upload and whatnot. Exactly, because obviously when you're doing something like this, you end up putting a lot of time and effort into getting it all ready, and then the week's happening where like so much of your time is spent in the midst of doing it, and, like, there's just not enough time in the day yeah. to do this and run a full commentary channel on the side and do anything else that needs to be done. So, yeah, it's always fun. We'll have to uh, talk about that, actually, Rishi, for next week. Well, next week is fine, because I've not got any commentary next week. Oh, that's <laughs> All right for some, isn't it? <laughs> I know. You see, this is why I was just like, I'll book this week off of work, and then I'm back next week so I can just go, yeah, can't do anything, so many thorns. So that also means that then I can actually do other um, health our comms comms, because then there's actually the time to do it. Mm -hmm. You see, there's a thought process here. Indeed. We are now $395 dues away from the next incentive game on lock, so... Uh, if you want to see what uh, we've got next, go and donate. Five dollars and up gets you entered into the USPSN Sonic Mania download code raffle. So, haha. -ha. Mhm. Mm and um, for Old Legends, um, I will rattle through the list of incentives now for you, so you can let us know where you want that five dollars donation to go to. So we've got the uh, um, Mega Man X Five incentives, which are the ones that are coming up most immediately. Um, so you, we can start as X or start as zero. Um, X is currently behind on one dollars with zero ahead at five dollars. So you could change that in an instant if you chose to send it there. And um, we also have the opportunity to get the black zero armor, and um, get the ultimate armor X, and get the awakened zero ending. But we are quite a ways from those donation totals. And then we've also got our really lovely um, Final Fantasy VII naming bid war where just everything and its mother is getting named because we've got Barrett named, I believe, the winning name at the mid is THD, I think. I'm just looking and just seeing if I'm indeed correct on that. Yes, so I believe Barrett at present will be named THD because he's winning with $11. Yeah. Um, Cloud is currently winning, well, Cloud's name is Dickhead or however you want to pronounce it, is winning that naming war at $304. Um, Ares being named Gonna Die is winning with $75. Tifa being named Spiranda is winning with $34. Um, we've also got um, Red13 being named Sunny at $25. Um, Kite Sith being named Entom is winning at $34, I believe. Mm. Um, Vincent being named Funny is winning at $83. Um, have I already said Tifa being named Speranda is winning at $34? I think so. Well, there's that again. And Sid being named Guy Fieri is winning at $90. I love that. Yes. Oh, and also Yuffie being named Waifu is winning at $17. You can obviously introduce brand new um, names if you would like to and also the other names are Kite Sith as Pingus, Cloud as Protag, Barrett as Helnar, um, Kite Sith as Prim Primbleson, um, Aeris is Gonna Live, Cloud as Edgelord, Red 13 is Crash, Barrett as Mr. T, Barrett as Booker T and Vincent as Alucard. And also, yes, people, I know that I am mispronouncing Daikid 
dickheads, whatever the hell it is, but um, it's it's just gonna roll like right away. <laughs> yep. Everybody seems to have their own way of pronouncing it as well. I'm seeing very few that are actually the same. I got people saying it's Daiki, some saying it's Daikahead, and other D I K D. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Photoed Legend says, hmm, if I put X in the league, can we make it an armless X run? Um, I'm not sure about that. It may be too much of a strain on Snake. But if you want to start with X, so he's currently being beaten by zero by about four dollars. Yeah, so you could change that in an instant, and we can most certainly pass the message on to Snake to see if he would be happy to make it an armless X run. Mm -hmm. um, but he, he may ask for a few more dollar redos to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know I certainly would. Right, so you may think that flare gun wasn't really anything significant, but it does reveal a very, very important item which you use to upgrade your magnum to make it oh. an even better magnum, which is just so immensely powerful it defies all belief. So I'm uh, definitely going to want that, especially for when we get to the final boss, which is around about when you get it. Okay, so thank you very much, Foretold Legends. That money is going straight to X, which means that he is now in the lead of our Mega Man X5 race. Well, not a race, but who bid war between who we are playing as. So he's winning by one dollar. So anybody who wants to, you know, get in on that, get over the top. Now is the time. Yeah, because um. It's tomorrow at the time of us uh, streaming this, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and put out the call on uh, Twitter. It's a good plan. So we found the shotgun parts, but our shotgun is currently in storage, so we won't be able to use that just yet until we find a store box to use. I think there's one coming up though, so that's okay. You know, I'm liking the fact that these store boxes are basically TARDISes because, you know, they can transport to wherever the next store box is and all your stuff is still there. It's like the proper high-tech stuff, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's the cutting edge of modern technology or something. <laughs> uh, we're out of space to grab those herbs, but I think what I might be able to do is, if there is indeed a store box coming up, I can go ahead and grab that on the way back if I fancy backtracking just a wee bit. Hmm. Just so you know, make sure we've got plenty of herbs to go around. We may already have plenty, but there's no harm in uh, having a few more. Alright. Hey, there we go. Storage box. So we can uh, get our shotgun rejigged. Uh, mix up some more herbs. We can now finally deposit the uh, box key and I believe we can now deposit the valve. So that actually gives us plenty of space to uh, take the shotgun again. And then we can also pick up the herbs. Well it's out perfectly then, didn't it? Mm -hmm. That it did. Now don't forget guys, um, since we have slashed the cost of incentive bonus games uh, from 1000 to 500, uh, I guess the max goal uh, we would like to reach is 5000, uh, so that's 10 incentive games overall. Anything over that will be a bonus. So uh, yeah, get to donating, the next one will be unlocked at 2000. Indeed, and it's going to be quite a fun one I think. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's go back and grab those herbs and then we'll get ready for the next boss fight, which is coming up in just a few moments. There we are. And uh, we'll combine this one with our smaller batch to make the big batch. And we'll save the other green for if we find a red later on, so that we can make another one of those uh, super duper herb mixes. Mm hmm. There we are. I 
think I want to take two lots of herbs just in case. So uh, I'll probably a good idea. And we'll take out the ink ribbon so that we have a means of saving here, since this is a pretty crucial point in which to do so. Mm -hmm. I believe we'll get some more ink ribbons here as well. I believe there's a ink ribbon here. Yes, there is. Uh, how close are we to 2,000 donated? We are 395 dollars away. Well, to be more specific, we're 394 dollar dues. 99 cents away from $2,000, but uh, that's just quibbling. Yes, yes it is, Rich. <laughs> All right, so yeah, don't so... worry if you can't, like, donate today or tomorrow, or even the day after. We are running until the 31st, uh, and even then, we have uh, an incentive block marked out from the 1st September to the 3rd, so uh, once payday rolls around and you're feeling generous and want to support our cause, chuck it in the, chuck it in the pot, so to speak. Exactly. And even if you can't, we're just happy you're here and supporting us. Mm -hmm. If you can spread the word, even yes, better. Definitely. There you go. Oh, there's a first aid spray there. I should probably grab that as well. Yes, indeed. Especially with the final boss coming up. Uh, it's not the final boss, it's probably the... S if you count the moth, technically it's the uh, third to last boss. Mm-hmm. But Could the moth be. doesn't really uh, do much damage. You can take him down in a few magnum shots, usually. So, uh, it is the um, anti-penultimate boss that we are coming up to then. What is an anti-penultimate thing? Third to last. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. I like it. <laughs> the sub-penultimate. <laughs> yeah. I always kind of loved the, the first instance of my learning of the word penultimate was the penultimate peril um Lemony Snicket's series of unfortunate events. Always loved the word after that. Um, and then I think I was watching Pointless and someone said anti-penultimate as a word. And I was just like, wait, is that a thing? Yes, it is a thing. Hmm. And it's glorious. Now we need this key here. Good stuff, Giga Floor. Thank you. And now we just need to use it on the box outside. And then strange things start happening, I assume. Well, that song from Toy Story? Uh, sure, why not? <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, it doesn't quite happen right now, but it happens midway down. Yeah, nice big loud siren, that's a nice way to subtly know the zombies that, hey, we got some food for you right here, come and get it. What's been to that? How else are they going to know that there's prime human meat down here? Like. They're clearly just going to be walking about, like going, I've eaten everybody that I can up to this point, I want a bit more. There's like maybe and... five living beings at this point in this entire area. Exactly, so like, we're doing them a favour. It's the claw! Ooh. The claw! Can you hear me? Come on, snap out of it! You know, it's a good deal damn thing you said Ada waits specifically and not just Ada, otherwise you probably would be bankrupt by now. <laughs> <laughs> so, we at, we at five dollars now. Nice. Or, or was that, was that an Ada? No, that was just an Ada, and there was no wait. Um, so we're still on four. We are indeed. Or is it five since I said, was that an... No, 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 we already oh. counted that one. Okay, so we're still at four. Good. Don't you ever just wish you could have a new head? All the time. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. Ouch. And you don't want to get too far away, because otherwise what ends up happening is, is that uh, he'll jump on you, so you want to keep a relative distance away. 
I want to know how he missed you when he first jumped down. I don't know, maybe it's full for dramatic effect. I guess. Alright, let's use the uh, spray. Cocked that one up. Come on, come a bit closer this way so I can uh, get a little bit more distance on you. There we go. Bloody tank controls. I just wish I could turn properly. This is actually one of the uh, harder fights in the game. Well, it does look like it, because you don't really seem to have much space to maneuver. Oh, you really don't. And also because Leon doesn't move entirely that quickly, and also turning is an absolute nightmare. Um, yeah, I can see this being a pain. Yeah, but luckily if you only take like one pot shot and run, you can uh, generally get by okay. But uh, he is supposedly dead now. That is not the case at all. We'll be seeing him again later on. But for yeah, now, but he has been... Uh, dead. Massive air quotation marks. He is sleeping. Is the technical term. <laughs> so uh, we get treated to some more cutscenes and then we make it to the Umbrella Lab. Which is where the Yay! last segments of the game will take place. Wake up. So is that like the last half hour or so? About half hour, say? 40 minutes, I would say. Nice. Ooh. You, uh... Do you, like, either of you remember the, um... Oh, what, what was it? The regular, uh, new 3DS that had, like the PAL Super Nintendo color scheme. Yeah. I think well, so. uh, there's, a, there's a new 3DS XL coming out with that stuff, and uh, it's a Super Nintendo variant. It's got, like, uh, stickers on the back with the power button and reset and so on. Oh, my God, it actually looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to link the tweet in chat. Take it easy. We're inside Wait, I'm just going to do the easy thing of just I'll going through Twitter. So just rest here in the meantime. Only slow you down with these injuries. Go, save yourself. I told you, it's my job to look after you. But you'll be in danger if you stay with me. Oh yes, that that is that is quite glorious. <laughs> now we get the whole thing was like Ada. I've fallen in love with you all of an hour ago. Can you believe that? I want to protect you. <laughs> oh. Ada, let me smash. No. <laughs> I have some yellow for your injuries. <laughs> yeah. I'll be right back. Also, Leon, you can't marry a woman you've just met. Rishi, stop bringing her back to Frozen. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tom. I, I just can't let it go. Ah. Let it go. Tom. Okay, Tom, that is entirely your fault. <laughs> yeah, I <guess>. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sweet, Fridius, not that long. Uh, that is pretty glorious. Alright, is there anything in the lockers? Yes, more shotgun shells. Wonderful. My combat shotgun will be very happy. Ooh, SilverDuke5000 says, Tom, the Nintendo UK store have just opened pre-orders for Ultra Sun Moon, as well as the box editions for the eShop version of Gold and Silver. Nice. Definitely. Cool beans. Alright, uh, I'm just thinking what I need to do here. I think we have enough shotgun rounds to actually put away the handgun for a while. So uh, that's what I'm going to do, just to uh, keep some space, because we do need some space for later on. And I kind of want to take the... Uh... Oh no, we don't need the box key just yet, so we don't have to worry about that. I will need an ink ribbon though, because I do want to save. Yeah, the box editions of uh, Gold and Silver for the eShop are basically collector's things. They come with a download code. I have to say, it's, it's not a trend I'm liking of collected or boxed editions which give you a code. It's like, why? Yeah, I much prefer to have actual physical stuff. Like, usually what sells me on a collector's edition is a, a decent quality figure and a good soundtrack. 
Definitely. Usually that's like the minimum. Like you can also throw in art books and such, I suppose, as well. That would be uh, quite nice. And usually any other cool, unique trinkets as well are usually a good way to sell me on something like that. Uh, the uh, official Sonic Twitter put out uh, Studioopolis Act 2's music. Funny, I thought they said once they'd uh, gotten Mania out of the door, they were going to start advertising forces a bit more. Hmm. Tom, there is still time, Mania. It's only been out, like, a week, is it, at this point? A week and a half, a at week. best. A yeah. week is literally 10 billion years in internet time. <laughs> This is true, but they're probably going to wait mm, maybe about three weeks to a month, I would have thought. That was a very good zombie impression to death. We're going to wait. <laughs> <laughs> I want a good ice level in forces. I got, want a good lava level in forces. Give me some elemental shit, but switch it up a bit. I want some sonic forces in forces. That'll be good, yeah. Mm. I want some game with my game. <laughs> what are you buying? It's just Sonic Mania on a loop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be the greatest troll ever. All right. It would also certainly be one way to uh, spend the runtime, eh? Oh yeah, absolutely. So, uh, in order to activate the room we were just in, we need a fuse to uh, bring the power back. So that's kind of what we're doing right now. And uh, the superconductor here will allow us to repower this uh, used casing, so that we can do exactly that. What about so Sonic using the force in Sonic Forces? It's very silly. Very we silly. really have to sit through this entire thing. Surely you can just abridge it ever so slightly. <laughs> no, no, no. Today on How It's Made, fuses. <laughs> Now we now have a main fuse, so let's go ahead and use that. Today on how it's made, zombies. I love how it's made. It is pretty damn legit, not gonna lie. I do, if I'm just channel surfing, it's something I'll always stop on. Mm. I think that's not something I've watched in a very, very long time. There are a bunch of, like, various, I don't, don't want to say knockoffs, but like, that yes. sort of thing, like, who is the one who has made it? It is he, this guy. <laughs> How do they do it as well as another one? But that tends to mm. expand past just making things in a factory or whatever. Alright, end of this corridor here is where we need to go. And we'll pick up our next weapon, the flamethrower. Nice. It's relatively uh, not used very often, but you do need it to actually get past a particular point. And you can also use it to get some uh, instant kill on the uh, plant buggers that we're going to be f encountering pretty soon as well. And that uh, gives you the user registration, which lets you know how to access the computer that we need uh, to uh, get to later on. The Grey Thunder has a brilliant idea for a television a television show. How it's braid, a show about hairstyling. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of people would actually get some value out of that, but that would, I'm sure there's like a YouTube show or two out there that uh, cover that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Most likely, yeah. I mean, there's pretty much a YouTube channel for everything these days really and if you're not finding it you're not trying hard enough as far as i'm concerned basically oh, we'll get some magnum rounds around here ah probably around there somewhere but with i think we go around the area a couple of times so if i have missed them i can grab them again Ah, this area. This is where we find the super lickers for the first time. Oh, joy. There you are. 
Come on, bit closer. Boom! Get back up here. Boom! Cheeky bugger. He got up slightly later than the other guy, so he had invincibility frames. Crafty bastard. So what's the difference between the super lickers and the normal lickers? Are they just more dangerous and like more health, more damage output, that sort of Pretty thing? much superior to the regular off-shelf liquor. Ah, see what I did there? <laughs> yeah, that's what I see. <laughs> <laughs> the real main difference is the original ones are 16 bits. Oh, well, the new one. Fuck. Fuck. Fuck the joke up. I'm, I'm going over. Bye. <laughs> no, Tom, you could have saved it by saying the regular ones were 16 bit. These are 32 bit. Okay. Also, I'm already home. That was fast. <laughs> Behold, plant demons. Even though they're not really demons, they're kind of like plant zombie hybrids. So Behold! Corn zombies! <laughs> oh god, that would just be terrifying. Oh my god, I think it actually is corn zombies. Ah, torch them! They do actually uh, spit acid on you as well, so you want to be careful. Also, if you kill them with a regular weapon, they will actually uh, take some lashes at you with the uh, tendrils. So, you can't be too careful around those guys. Since you got the flamethrower and plenty of ammo to go with it, your best bet is usually just torching it. You know, just to mm. cut out the middleman completely. Alright, we're gonna save those herbs for later because... The herbs don't disappear, luckily, but you can always backtrack for them, and since we're not really all that good on space right now, what we'll probably do is we'll just completely clear our inventory just before the final boss and just take as many herbs as we can, plus like our shotgun and magnum. So uh, we're going to come across a liquor as well, so I want to be prepared beforehand. Because, you know, that'll be the smart thing to do. And occasionally I am allowed to do that. My brain does let me on occasion. <laughs> Jump scare incoming! Aha! There you are. <laughs> Not quite in range. Trying to be very careful. With this guy. He's just sort of hanging out in a corner, isn't he? Yeah. Ah! He took a lick out of me. It's always like it's his name or something. <laughs> That's how they roll. Let me taste. Oh, we took a bit of damage there. Luckily, we got a first aid spray we can use immediately. And uh, thankfully, that is pretty much the... I think it's the last of the liquors. I don't think we have any more to worry about after this. Mm-hmm. And uh, we can also store these away for a rainy day, so we can actually pick these ones up. I have to say, Zork, I too am wondering what the hell that noise was. I'm assuming it was a child outside somebody's house, um, but I have no idea. You see, it's incredibly fitting for the slightly terrifying atmosphere we've got going on here, because everyone's just like, what the hell was that? Well, it came from it my might... headphones, so I don't think it was me. That sounded way <laughs> too loud. It may have been one of my neighbours. Ah, fair enough. Yeah. thought it was somebody's neighbours, because, like, while I do have a child next living next door to me who screams regularly it's it's not my next door screaming child so <laughs> that's enough. no sweet child of mine i'll have you know yeah all right so what's the uh, eta on the finale Bob? uh probably about 20 minutes 25 perhaps yep yeah, you're well underestimate hey glad to hear it 
So if you want to get any uh, last minute donations in, guys, uh, feel free. Don't forget, $5 and up gets you entry into a raffle to win a US PSN code for Sonic Mania. And uh, we've also got a bunch of, in bunch of incentives like naming FF7 characters, Man X5, that ends tomorrow. So uh, get your donations in quickly if you want to uh, support that cause. And uh, yeah, when we reach $2,000 raised overall, you'll get a new incentive game. Definitely. And also, since we are reaching the tail end, I feel I might introduce a new incentive. Ooh. It's, it's mostly just for uh, Klonoa on Thursday, so you've got a bit of time before then. Um, but basically, if you guys... I did say 100 initially, but if you guys can donate, let's say $75, before Klonoa, or at some point before Klonoa finishes, then I will sing Stepping Wind from Klonoa 2 in the original Phantomillion live. So that'll be that'll be interesting, because yeah, Phantomillion's gold yuke. So that might might incentivize some people to <laughs> donate. <laughs> uh, what's the name of the song, mate? Stepping Wind. Okay, from Klonoa 2. From Klonoa, uh, one oh. How do you spell Klonoa? Oh, K L O N O N A. God, I love the Magnum. Just watching the zombies' heads pop up is so satisfying. Boom! You don't actually need to kill these guys. I just want to show off the Magnum. Plus, if I drain out all the ammo, it ensures my safety. Plus, I'll be able to use the Magnum parts to uh, replenish my ammo for free. Mhm. Mm uh, Klonoa is on Thursday the 24th. Yes, so not long until then, so you've just got to get the doll redos in. Is that by one person or overall? Um, that's overall. Okay. So you can all chip in to get to that point, because while I'm happy to have a bit of a sing-song, um, having a sing-song in gibberish requires a little bit more of an incentive, I feel. Alright, we've got the moth fight coming up now. And this is technically the penultimate boss, even though he's kind of pathetic. That's far my main. A bit of a penultimate boss fight is always good. Even if it is a bit rubbish. Oh, we have another donation, uh, again from Umbryonic65, $5, Ooh. oh boy, another donation from me. How many elixirs does it take to get to the centre of a Tootsie Pop Pop? Put this towards making Sparanda a female, aka naming Tifa Sparanda, and enter me into the raffle. So, Umbryonic65 now has two entries. <laughs> so, was that $5 reduce? It was indeed $5 reduce. Awesome. Alright, so, we need to get to this computer, but the problem is, there's lava already all over the place. So what do you do if you have moth lava all over your keyboard? Do you break out the bug spray? Do you just clean it? No, you just take the shotgun, point it down directly towards your computer, and open fire. Well, and of somehow, the computer ends up completely fine. Uh, we will need to set up a proper uh, incentive counter, says Flame, for that, as well as the Sonic Mania raffle. It's already done, thank you very much. Uh, but okay. <laughs> you see, I'm on it like a car bonnet. Good stuff, mate, and never say that again, please. <laughs> Don't worry, I will try not to. Good stuff, mate. Uh, come on, come on, and donate to us. Of course. Uh, how long uh, do you think we should wait until we ask Tad to start setting up? Uh, you could probably get him to. You could probably have him start setting up now. In all honesty, we're pretty damn close to the end at this point. Okay. Um, I'd say when we have the next cutscene with Ada, that's probably the best indication possible to let you know there's like maybe ten minutes left. Mm hmm. 
he has been let known. My grammar is really bad today, I apologize. My energy is yes. back up, but my brain is just not working. <laughs> it's fine, don't worry. I'm I'm there too. Like just nice bit of sleep is required again, I feel like my body has just gone nope, just just too tired right now. Mm-hmm. Does not compute. Please insert Gerda. Oh, did we get another aid away? Uh, no, we haven't, but um, we will be getting a couple of extra seats. Oh, fuck, I forgot about you. <laughs> For your insolence, uh. taste my tasty shotgun. Have a look at that. Oh, wait, you can't. You're dead. <sighs> By the way, Torrin Ritchie says Michael H. Art, oh, loving the Secret Rings LP so far. Thank you. I uploaded the uh, final parts of it the other day, and it ends this Friday. Yes, which is always fun. So yeah, thank you for enjoying that, Michael. Yeah, we are pretty damn close to the end now. Uh, do we take a green herb to go? Yes, because we've got a red herb right here as well. We can combine the two. And then when we go back to the box, we can uh, use the blue herb as well and... Have another super herb to take with us. <laughs> Teen Shade, I like your spirit and your dirty tactics, but um, it, it's not going to happen. You, you're not going to get me to say that phrase again. <laughs> if this stream was later at night, you may have been able to, but... Uh... Unfortunately, this is quite uh, mid-afternoon, early evening, and usually people are pretty alert at that point. Ada backwards is Ada. <laughs> yes, oh my god. it's a palindrome. <laughs> uh, that's my contribution. I just sit here spying bullshit, really. <laughs> what do you think I do most of the time? Hey, you're a lot more eloquent, okay? Mm, yeah, sort of. Citation needed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck with that one. Uh, let's reload the shotgun. You can actually reload in the menu, which saves you an animation, but sometimes in the heat of battle especially, you just flat out forget. And then you're stuck reloading, and then oh, you know what, a zombie's gnawing on your crotch or something. Seems totally reasonable. Nice thing about the upgraded shotgun, you can occasionally shoot off the torsos of zombies. It is amazing. But uh, what we're after here is the MO disc, which is the last key item I believe we get, apart from the uh, virus itself. MO sounds for modus operandi. Yes. Could also sound for mission objective. But they are zombies. You. Yeah, my brain just Murder. today. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Many ostriches. You came for the blue virus, didn't you? Yes, finish that, please. From me. This is my husband's legacy. Oh, no, that's fine, too. No, I'm just saying AMO stands for many ostriches. Oh, okay, well. That's ostrich egg on my face. You know who I'm talking about. Manly oranges. <laughs> Alright, I'll stop now. <laughs> uh, basically, this is where somebody just finally flat out says that Leon's kind of dumb, which he kind of is in this game. <laughs> it, it was a bit of a learning curve between 2 and 4. I mean, it's his first day on the job as well. There's going to be some awkwardness here and there. Oh, definitely. And also, I mean, zombie apocalypse? I'm not sure everyone's going to be the most smart person they're ever going to be during a zombie apocalypse because like really seriously who's going to expect that on their first day you just know you're going to be losing your mind yeah i suppose so but this is where you find out that ada isn't entirely who she says she is no. uh, apparently yeah, she is a spy that. sent by an organization to recover the virus for themselves what happened what happened you mean what's happening surely Oh! <laughs> bitch just got pwned. And uh, now we're going to steal the virus from her. And then assume yeah. we just assume she's dead and run off. 
I just saw it. Yeah. And thankfully, it doesn't even take up a space of your inventory either. Well, that's not good. <laughs> At the very moment Leon took the G virus, the Blue Spheres theme on Mania kicked in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. But no, um, the self destruct sequence at this point has now been activated, so we don't have a timer yet, but we will. So I guess when the timer kicks in, that's when uh, Tana should start saying off. Yeah, that'll be like literally the five minute mark, and then obviously we'll have credits and such after. But this is probably the point he wants to set up because this is the final Ada scene. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? You know what this is about. So just hand over the G virus. Is Ada trying to kill us? Uh, well, trying. She's trying to threaten us into giving the virus over to her since we now have it in our possession. Yeah, well, we all know how this is going to end, don't we? Don't make me shoot you. You can't do that. <laughs> Cocky bastard. It's like, you can't do that. I can. And I have. Uh -oh. Ada! <sighs> Alright, I have told him to set up. Right out, good. Don't give up. It turns out she was in fact still alive, alive enough to be able to shoot Ada in the arm and almost uh, topple her off the railing in revenge for the bitch slap for earlier. Oh, we have a twenty dollar donation or nineteen ninety nine to be precise. Hello, HSC and Sony Fun Troopers. Been wa been watching some of the past charity streams and I wanted to give some for all the hours of content you guys have provided. Thank you very much. Uh, keep up the good work and let's raise some money for the kids. Super Sonic. P.S. The Dragon Ball Futures playthrough was pretty high. Thank you. That was actually a pretty fun playthrough. It was actually. I, I really enjoyed watching that one. Have you nothing to say, Volk? I thought that was our special thing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of trying to pay attention to this cutscene here. <laughs> no worries, mate. Uh, Super Sonic, if you're in the chat and uh, you want that to go towards anything, uh, like the uh, American PSM code raffle for Sonic Mania, uh, feel free to let yourself be known, mate. Indeed. Thank you very, very much for your very generous donation and your kind words. And you know what, I was just thinking, the one way that this scene would be made even better or ruined is if literally as she was falling down, Ada, wait! <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would have been beautiful. So uh, he decides instead of, uh, you know, maybe destroying it properly, he just throws it away. Into God knows where and God knows what. So now at this point, I believe I go back through the red area. And uh, we go down the ladder and all that malarkey. We got our final save to make and then prepare ourselves for the final boss fight. Oh no! Get off me! Son of a bitch. Oh, we haven't been poisoned or anything, have we? No, we're fine. Good. Okay, Tana just needs 10. He's just grabbing food. Yep, that's fine. 10 minutes is about however long I need. Oh, bless him. Proton John actually uh, retweeted us. Oh! <laughs> Excellent! I will give him an egg <laughs> to show my appreciation to him. I bet you any right. money he's probably sick of hearing that by now, but then again, he made it a Twitch emote, so who really knows how he feels inside truly, but he must be taking it in stride at the very least. Mm -hmm. Ah, new zombos. Ah! <laughs> there it is, there's the Wesker egg. Yep, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> so we can pretty much use our uh, shotgun with impunity at this point. We only really need the magnum and to be at least somewhat accurate with it. Mm. Um, we're going to use the disc first because I believe that will then free up some inventory space for us. It's so dramatic. It's so dramatic, and yet there's no timer yet, so it's like, what is the point? 
Yeah. <laughs> We're like trying to tell you there's a self-destruct that's going to happen eventually. Yeah, but it's not a problem until the, there's a timer, because at that point it's like, oh no, okay, we are about to die. Yeah, it doesn't until matter how long it, it doesn't matter how long it takes for you to get from uh, this point to when the timer actually happens. It's always going to be five minutes, no matter what. Five <laughs> minutes all. until you become a god, I suppose, or something to that effect. All right. That's all the time we have to play with him. Indeed. Alright, let us make another super herb. Uh, armor shotgun up, just in case we do need it. It's a good backup weapon to have. Ombreon65 says, Volk, you need M.O. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> I need Mo Dick, I think is what it actually translates to. Would you uh, like Mo Dick? Uh, I hadn't really thought about it, but uh, no. <laughs> Uh, Zoopsonic says, uh, maybe it would be nice, but uh, he already has it. Uh, so I'm just uh, letting him know of the fine incentives that can be found on the HFC Sony Fon site. There's also the Make Richie Sing donation for Planoa. Yay! Alright, let's get our Magnum ready, because obviously that's going to be our main weapon. Shotguns there purely as a backup. Well, you might as well just take everything you got, because why the hell not? Well, I got my shotgun, I got my magnum, and I've got as many herbs as I can physically carry on my person. Um, with six lots of herbs, I think we should be okay. In fact, I'm pretty sure that we're more than okay, but there's no kill quite like overkill, as you all may well know. Well, of course, and also we have faith in you, Volk. So it, it's all good, and to be fair, like you're yeah, 40 minutes under the estimate, so we could just sit here for like another 40 minutes and it'll still be fine. Hey, but I'm not we gonna can, do that. But we're not going to. Yeah, that wouldn't be very <laughs> fair. Alright then, uh, we gotta cool down the elevator. Pardon me, first. And then we get the final encounter with William Birkin. This <laughs> is like, God, this elevator is gonna take forever. Oh, there he is! It's a Tyranid Carnifex! And, uh, yeah, that is the power of the Magnum. I think on medium difficulty he does take a few more shots than that, but the Magnum is just so insanely powerful, there's not really much difference between the two. Was that the final boss? No, not quite, he has a second phase. Oh, good. Like All I said, right. I have also been practicing. Even if on normal, I'm still not entirely uh, well versed. Let's put 1999 to the Seeing Richie incentive. That is totally fine. Ooh. Money is going in right now. No, he's eating me. <laughs> he's gonna eat me too. Oh, oh my, my god! god. <laughs> right, let's use one of those herbs and uh, gun it. He's trying to jump up on the thing, but he can't. Oh, there we go. Alright. I think I managed to make him unstuck so I can actually fire at him properly now. There we go! Another couple of pot shots and he's down. Awesome. So, Richie, how much is left to uh, make you sing Stepping Wind during the Planoa playthrough? It's another fifty-five dollars, I believe. Oh, not much, guys. Not much. No, it's quite easy to be fair. So, come on, bring it. Oh yeah, back in the day, the William forms were really, really freaky. I mean, just look at this thing. He's still just literally a just blob of mess right there. That's still kind of moving around. It's oh, it's gross. I don't like it. No, I, I don't much like it either. It's pretty grotesque. <laughs> Pretty sure they spell elevator wrong on the floor. It may be an abbreviation, but they could also have just been completely stupid. <laughs> but you know what? It's not my problem. My problem is getting out of here before the whole building explodes, but luckily we did it with three minutes to spare. And uh, now we got the final cutscene, and then when the credits roll by, that'll be it for RE2.
Woo! Yeah. Claire, get your head out the wind head out the window. God's sake. That's like basic car rise 101. Don't stick your head out the window when there's a low bridge coming. <laughs> it's definitely more intimidating than Wesker turning into spaghetti. <laughs> Oh, hello there, little girl, who we have no idea about. That is, uh, Sherry Birkin, I believe. Isn't she in, um, Resi 6? Yes, I believe she is. Uh, she travels around with not Wesker. Yes, I'm <laughs> That's basically what he is. But yeah, uh, Sherry you get to interact with during Claire's side of the story, so... In Scenario B is slightly different, and then in Scenario A... Basically, Ada Wong gets put in place of Sherry, and a few scenes are put in different places. She doesn't die, like, haphazardly like uh, we saw earlier, but, you know. That is that. Ada. Goodbye, Ada. I knew you for only one hour, maybe an hour and a half tops, but you were significant to the plot in some way. Oh, Ada. <laughs> Wait for me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably about as good as we're going to get in terms of cutting this stream out. So, uh, there you go, folks. That was Resident Evil 2. It has been a bit of a ride, I will admit. I try to be overconfident with normal, and we all know how that turned out. But if you missed that, you can check out the VOD and see how hopelessly I failed. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for uh, the, do the, uh, the donations, rather. God, what is wrong with my mouth today? Uh, leading up to Leon being the victor in the bid war. And, of course, anyone who's donated throughout... Uh, Resi 2. Coming up next, we have Tanner with Little Big Planet 2, and I believe he's going to run through like uh, the campaign of that game and show off some uh, interesting Sackboy designs. So uh, stay tuned, there will be a little <laughs> break between Resi 2 and Little Big Planet 2, so don't go anywhere. See you soon. See you soon. Thanks See a lot ya. for tuning in. <laughs>